Yes. What is up, beautiful people? Welcome to How to Trade, formerly known as the Midday Show. That is your girl, Adara. I'm Sharif, and as per usual, we're gonna wait for everyone to migrate on over from the other stream, baby. We already have some of the OGs already in the chat, ready to go. We got the crazy stitch lady, and we got small cap trader extraordinaire Nimit in the chat as well. Shout out to Singapore, Darwin, Cuba, Jacko, Jonathan, Rabbit, DK, Scott H, another small cap trader, NECA, we got Clayton, we got Ryan, Thomas Johnson, Benton, Aaron and Joanna Brewster, can't forget that famous duo, Benson, we got Lewis, Pete Stocks, Escape, April, James Dell, shout out to James, Midnight Snowman, okay. I okay. like that. Yeah, Ralph Woodward, we got Pauly D, we got Peter Panda, we got Prion, we got, we got too many names here, I, I can't even catch up. Let me tell you quick about this Tesla trade, you heard Neil mention this 189 level and I could not agree more with Neil. We kind of front ran this a little bit, out 180, what did I get long? 188.91, fat finger, that's why you're gonna see two green candles there and a red candle. I got out some by accident in this red candle over, or the right, red triangle, excuse me, over here, punch long, right back in. Um, I actually meant to get one, some out at 189, but I hit 188, hence that's why it's there. We're a dollar plus right now in the moolah, well, let's see, oh now, now we're not a dollar plus in the moolah anymore, but that's all right. A lot of volatility on this name. Looking for a 190 touch here, Adara. So I'm looking to de-risk the majority of the position uh, in and around that buck 90. And then we're going to leave a little piece if this bad boy continues to run simultaneously. I'm keeping my eye on the future here because that was a big boy move up on the future. And when we get big boy moves, there is a chance, you know, we get that mean reversion trade back down. Um, so I'll be keeping my eye on that. And I will not allow this position to get... Um, I, I won't allow it to be too much out of the money. Uh, if anything, we're gonna risk about 30 cents or so to the downside. Uh, and then if Tesla does bounce off VWAP, and you heard Neil talk about this level as well, he was looking at that 188 level, which is where VWAP is on Tesla. We may reignite the position uh, at that level if it does break down, but we're gonna, we're gonna get out 188.60s or so uh, if it makes its way back down. I do like the VWAP idea by Neil, uh, mainly because uh, I do like how it held here originally. And I also like the fact that that 188 level also happens to be with VWAP. You like that confluence, well, oh, come on. Confluence there between the two, shout out to the OBE, the one, the Kenobe, uh, sitting, uh, sitting chilling back there. Dara, uh, how's your morning? Good morning. My morning has been good. I am in it, I am, um, how was your morning actually? Other than this fabulous little Tesla Cybertruck to the upside. It's good, we're, you know, we're opening up that new medical center, so it's uh, yeah. a whole bunch of headaches with uh, designs and with the doctors and with everybody, so having to juggle this job and that job. It's exciting uh, though, yeah. yeah. Uh, but I get how that would be like a lot to, to have is. on yeah. one's plate. Um, yeah, I am in, I am this IWM short right now. This is a range short. I like when ranges just say, hi, Adara, look at me. And I mean, that's certainly what we did here. <laughs> Double top, we got here. I watched this test because I couldn't get involved initially. Uh, and I watched, we came right back to that level. I was like, Adara, this is your moment. Press uh, short. I'm trying to get this out at around that 195 um, and some change there. So really, again, just playing the range. If we bounce off the EMA slash this earlier low, I shall re-enter. But right now, we are getting into my point of exit. So I shall say au revoir to IWM. Really just trying to focus, like I said, I, I'm the happiest when I'm when I'm being rangy. And I find for whatever reason, I've really enjoyed playing uh, the ranges in these ETFs for whatever reason. We tried some SPY yesterday some IWM over the last couple weeks. Um, I decided uh, yesterday that I'm going to have to, I think, ban myself from Eli Lilly for the time <laughs> being, just because I enjoy trading that name and I'm not, like not every trade on that has been unsuccessful, but I mean, yesterday it kind of wiped me out. So I think we're just gonna give that one a little bit of a breather and just focus on ranging these ETFs and these uh, large caps and whatever else pops into my horizon there. But really, this is the, the one trade I had on right now. Uh, I like this 195 bounce coming back in. I'm literally comfortable just getting in and out of this all day as long as this range holds up, I have to say. But I'm very excited for the lesson we have because yes. I think it's going to be uh, of great importance. Thank oh, you yeah. so much, Sean and Neil, for hyping this one up yes. over there at the big desk because I, I think we're both really excited to talk about fading earnings gaps today. Yeah, definitely got to shout out the Katina man and the Neil for uh, that hit. Do appreciate that as always. Uh, quickly 
quickly just want to mention Tesla. It's coming down into 189. I'm keeping my eye on this level here. So if 188.50 breaks, I'm going to give it another 10 pennies. I said 60s, but I'm recanting on that 60s. I'm going to give it to the, the bottom of this trough over here, these double candles where we double bottomed and then moved up. If we break 188. 50, that is where my line in the sand is. I'm gonna get out and then I'm gonna be looking again at 188, all right? So let's get to work, baby. We are talking today about fading the earnings gap and how appropriate of a time to start dropping lines about this topic because while we're in the midst of earnings season, you saw what uh, PayPal did, you saw what Arm did, you've been seeing what these big seven names have been doing uh, on earnings and what, um, you know, we, we should probably know how to play some of these names, right? So today's lesson, we're focusing on the strategy of fading the earnings gap. This approach involves taking advantage of the initial price gap that occurs after a company releases its earnings report. Fading the earnings gap is a contrarian strategy, so by definition more risky, where traders anticipate the reversal of the initial market reaction, which is either to the upside or the downside, aiming to profit from the stock reverting to the pre-earnings level. So that, in a nutshell, is what we're doing here. Typically you get, let's say we closed off at 100 bucks, Friday, or sorry, say Wednesday at 4 p.m., then Thursday at 9.30, it's at 110. So we have a gap of $10. That's all we're looking at. We're looking at the closing price before earnings and the opening price the subsequent day. So Wednesday, Thursday. All right, so earnings gap refers again to the difference between a stock's closing price at, before the earnings announcement and its opening price after the earnings report. Just explain that. A positive earnings gap occurs when a stock opens up higher than its previous close, while a negative earnings gap, you guessed it, uh, occurs when the opening price is lower. The market reaction here is important to gauge, okay? And oh, I have to put that, understanding... And EG, by the way, guys, on the topics means earnings gap. I hope that is very clear. So the market uh, reaction is important to gauge here. The initial market reaction to earnings can be quite exaggerated, okay, due to the surprise element and the influx of new information. Fading the earnings gap involves going against the initial trend, expecting a retracement of the stock price, and by, by definition, it is risky. So why would you fade? What is the purpose here? Well, there's volatility. Earnings can cause high volatility, creating potential for quick profits. And we see that a lot, okay? Uh, and it's also a mean reversion. There is a possible mean reversion to fading the gap. So markets tend to revert to the mean. So a large gap might be followed by a correction. And there's also short-term imbalances that we have to consider uh, in this equation. The gap can reflect short-term emotional reactions not long-term fundamentals, right? And we know algos are trading these earnings as much as humans are. So you're, you're why fade? You have volatility that you can take advantage of. There's typically a mean reversion that can be had depending, and there are short-term imbalances in the market that you can exploit, okay? But before you fade, here's what you need to consider. You need to analyze the company, understand the earnings report, the analyst expectations, and the company's health. You also need to check the volume. High volume during the gap indicates strong conviction, making a fade riskier. So the outsized volume names need to be looked at through the lens of caution, okay? And you also have to have stop losses. Where are you gonna put your stop loss? That's another main consideration that you have to look at before you enter in that fade. So we're looking at analyzing the company, checking volume, assessing where stop losses are gonna be, and obviously you're gonna manage risk that obviously has to do with position size. With these more outsized moves, you really need to consider decreasing your position size in order to manage risk, especially during earnings, okay? When to fade, though. Now we're gonna talk about when to fade. So gaps that exceed three to 5%, typically larger gaps suggest stronger reactions, potentially leading to larger corrections. Easy to measure the gap, you just do a quick mathematical calculation between the closing price before earnings and then the subsequent day at 9.30 where the price opened up, okay? So gaps exceeding three to 5% typically make the best candidates, okay? 
unexpected earnings plays as well. So when the earnings report was not expected by analysts to the either upside or the downside, it doesn't make a difference. Big misses or beats can create emotional gaps that are more likely to revert. So keep your eye on what analysts or the, the street was predicting before the report came out. Did it miss big or did it beat big? And con confirmatory indicators. Use technical indicators like relative strength index, like Bollinger Bands to confirm the momentum. Uh, questions or comments, Adara, here while I wet my beak. Yeah, I was gonna say, uh, well, <laughs> while the beak gets dipped, I think it's interesting too. I was gonna say, I'm sure oscillators would be really helpful here, right? So that you can get a sense of if things are overbought and oversold. Now, of course, you know, with everything, always make sure you have lots of confluence before making a move. And Bang. an example I'm gonna use with regards to oscillators is I know stuff like NVIDIA has been overbought on some of these uh, metrics for quite a while. Tesla, uh, your pal right now has been oversold on some of these metrics for a while, right? So I think uh, it, it's kind of interesting how these don't always predict immediate Bang. turnaround, but they're certainly worth keeping an eye on. I also, I like that they, they also include what kind of gaps are more likely to fade, but of course it's not gonna be one size fits all. Like no. ARM, that's a massive, massive like uh, earnings, yeah, a great I earnings move, and that. also a 60%. Yeah, so I was gonna say, I'm sure you have to use discretion. Also, I'm curious, as yeah. someone who is definitely uh, more of a trend trader and a momentum trader, how comfortable are you entering uh, something like this, which is more counter trend, and what kind of confluence would you personally need to enter a move like this? Not comfortable at all. Okay, okay. I'm not I, like, comfortable. I like that, yeah. But th it, just because I don't trade a certain way doesn't mean other people would no, do just, really well. Yeah. That's why we talk about this yeah. stuff, because you, know, you, you do fantastic in your style of trading, the Katina man kills it his way. The Neil's killing it his way. Even Brendo, did you know Brendo used to trade at the big desk? I did. Did you? Did you? Oh, yeah, yeah, no, because I remember I asked once, oh, like, what, what charts do you use for the small cap recap? And he was like, oh, well, I used to just use my own small cap chart. I was like, oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So he's like, you could use whatever. I was he like, loved oh. fading the small cap gappers. That was his Well, that's that was really smart. Like that. yeah, yeah, yeah. They, like, they're very fady. They are, right? Um, so when not to fade though, guys, that's another really important. So we just talked about when to fade. I'm sorry, I'm gonna repeat this again because you know people coming in and out. When to fade, gaps exceeding three to 5%. Uh, when the earnings report is unexpected, whether bullish or bearish, and use confirmatory indicators that are pointing in the direction of your move, okay? When not to fade though. Trending markets, be careful to fade strong stocks in trending markets, even if the name itself is, you know, not that great. The market, because it's trending, can have a way of carrying that stock with it, and you could end up getting rich. So be careful with trending markets. News-driven gaps, those tend to also be a bit stronger. So news events outside of earnings may sustain the gap direction, and so there could be that prolonged move on a news earn. Like, so say we get a fantastic new, uh, I don't know, let's say uh, a chip from NVIDIA that just uh, blows everything, the A100, the A800, it's like two, three generations new. Well, that's gonna have an effect, obviously, and that's not earnings related. And also, be on the lookout for low liquidity. So gaps that are happening with low liquidity. There we go on Tesla. All up into 190, pleased as punch. Let's see what we do here. Sorry to kind of completely digress, but we're trading at the same time. I'm keeping my eye at this 190 level. Do we encounter resistance at this level? We're doing the dance right now with 190. We just shot up into 190.20. Do we sustain this move though? So I'm not gonna wet my beak here um, at 190 because I just took some out at 88. Lucky number 88, right? Um, I'm looking for something along the lines of a 190.50 or so. Let's see what we get. Or maybe maybe we'll uh, we'll wet our beak here at the quarter dollar, I dare. Why not? What's life without whimsy? Uh, so we take some out there at the quarter dollar. Let's see what we do now with that half dollar level. We're moving up nicely here on Tesla, one and a half percent to the good. Let's go ahead and sit at that half dollar. I'm going to sit at 49s. Sorry to completely just digress there, but you know, no. we gotta do it. Looks like we're gonna get filled here at the half dollar and we get filled at the half dollar. We're almost $2 Beautiful. in the money, yeah. Oh. Tesla is absolutely pumping to the high side, please as punch. All right, load liquidity. Lack of volume can make an earnings uh, fade quite risky. It can be hard to enter, it can be equally as hard to exit. 
uh, that position. So make sure you're keeping your eye on the ones that have ample liquidity, both in the aftermarket and in the pre-market, because if you're gonna get into this, uh, you may find yourselves trading outside of market, uh, regular market hours. So you need to keep your eye on liquidity, especially outside of market, uh, market, regular market hours, Adair. Questions or comments? You yeah, know, I think the liquidity point is really good because there are a lot of names that report earnings and they might not uh, necessarily be moving as much or immediately. So sometimes the ones I'll bring in the big desk, they have very little pre-market action, right? So it's a little bit harder to judge the gap if we didn't really gap. Bang. Also, I think it's interesting to note too, one thing I want to say as well is uh, certain names. I know we were talking recently about how Carnival likes to just drop its earning report like yeah. a hot mic in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> so certain names don't even give you enough time to gap. So those also might be ones you'd want to be a little bit more cognizant Agree. before hopping into an earnings gap play when you don't really have enough of a gap. It kind of reminds me, too, of I know you are very cautious of small gap, small caps that don't gap, right, if they, if they move later in the day because you don't have pre-market action to work off of. Exactly. So I know they're a little bit different, but I think in terms of liquidity and gap action, maybe be a bit more cautious of yes. these ones that have really given you that gap that you can play around with in terms of levels. I, I agree my note on that. 100% there, especially with relation to the small caps. Uh, it has got to break above that pre-market high. If there's no definable pre-market high on these small caps, I just won't get involved, okay? Yep. All right, so the execution. How are we gonna execute? And no, we're not killing anybody. We're executing the <laughs> trade. So how do we do this? So the entry point says here, we wait for the market to open the subsequent day if the, if the earning uh, was in the aftermarket the previous day or if the earnings was in the, the morning, the day of, we still wait till 9.30, okay? So we wait for the market to open, observe the initial price movement, and look for signs of an overreaction or an unsustainable trend in the direction of the earnings gap. And that's kind of what you're looking for. You're like, Sharif, well, really, how do I know if it's an overreaction or if it's an unsustainable trend? Can you use technical indicators? Are you coming into a key level of resistance? Uh, are you getting di uh, diversion here um, between uh, the higher highs on the price chart and the higher highs on the RSI, for example? So l use technical indicators here to help guide you. Uh, you, you should also enter a trade in the opposite direction, be, betting on a retracement. And that's the whole move here. And that's why it's contrarian and that's why it's uh, dangerous. And I'm going to have to digress again because we're coming into 191 Adara uh, on TSLA now up one and three quarters percent. We were wa worried about de-risking here in front of that $10 level at 190, but we just made a pop into 191. So we'll probably have to do some charting here to find where the next resistance level is. We're gonna we're gonna pack our patience a little bit on this one because I don't want to start doing charting while we're in the middle of the lesson. So, um, looking for obviously a move up, but unsure about where we're gonna encounter resistance for anybody following along on my trade. Okay, so enter a trade in the opposite direction, betting on a retracement. This can be done through short selling, obviously for a negative earnings gap, or buying for a positive earnings gap. Okay, so that's the execution aspect of it. Now the risk management, how are you gonna manage risk here? Make sure you are using stops and not just using stops, but your selection for the areas of where you're using stops. I think ARM probably would be a good idea here to, um, to use as a, an example, seeing that it's like fresh in everybody's mind and we just had that huge gap. So this is from 930's price onwards. So this doesn't show yesterday's aftermarket pop Shout out to the Katina Man and the uh, market recap show. So that's not gonna show you that because I've specifically asked this chart to exclude all pre-market price action and after-market price action so that I can see the gap uh, in its natural form without any distortions. So if I was to look to fade, obviously, the, uh, if I was, yeah, if I was looking to fade this earnings gap, I would have to find a key level here and that probably would have been 100 bucks. If 100 bucks got taken on a closing basis on the five minute look, that would be the end of my trade on ARM as a short, because it's a mean reversion trade. Why did I choose 100? Well, look at the opening price at 930. It was at 94 bucks, essentially 95 bucks. So I had no previous high with which to work because it was a blue sky setup on ARM. Forget about the aftermarket price action yesterday. That doesn't count. I'm talking about regular market hour pricing action. We had never been this high on ARM. So to me, the $100 level would have been absolutely an appropriate area to have a stop. So if we had gotten short 
at 94 to whatever this candle tops out 98. The stop for me would have been the break of 100 and that would have been the end of that trade for me and probably for good reason because it popped up into 126.58. Now, where would I be looking to take profits, right? Well, you're gonna be like, well, Sharif, how come you're not looking to take it all the way back down to previous close? That would be basically $77.50. Well, I think that that's not really uh, a realistic expectation because the market had two different um, periods with which to digest this information, the aftermarket yesterday and the pre-market today. It would have retraced a little bit closer to that level had the market overreacted initially. And yesterday that did actually happen on ARM. We popped into the 120s and then we retraced into the 95s or yeah, thereabouts in the 90s. But we didn't come anywhere close into yesterday's closing price. So I would have had a more realistic expectation. I would have looked at the 50% range between the opening, the opening, pr the opening price today at about 94 and a third. Ram Ram, if I can show the chart. Um, 94 and a third, and the, yesterday's closing price at 77. I would have been somewhere in between there at around 85. Just to be you know, reasonable in my expectations about where this one was gonna fade to. I don't know why I'm sweating. It's always so hot in here. I feel like it has been hot in here lately. Yeah, so that is what, that's how I would have positioned my orders on ARM. Profit taker around that 85 area, um, and my stop would have definitely been above 100. Position sizing. Also, equally as important here, because we're talking about, you know, we're talking about very volatile times. Okay, I have to take wet my beak here at 191 and a quarter. I just took out a little bit more on Tesla at 191 and a quarter. We have to really be careful with how much size we're getting in with, because number one, it's a mean, it's a, it's a contrarian trade, so you're going against the trend. So that's number one. Number two, um, there typically is a lot of volatility after earnings. So the, fat, the, the chances of you getting rinsed because it goes against your position or goes against your, uh, your trade you know, is a lot higher and it can move quicker too against your trade. So you have to be really careful with your risk management and that really comes down to uh, appropriate position sizing. So adhere to position sizing principles to ensure that one trade does not disproportionately impact your portfolio and obviously monitor your trade. You know, because of the volatile nature of uh, the, uh, the, this type of trade, it's against uh, the trend, it's in volatile time. Personally, I wouldn't wanna set up stops and leave the desk, right? Like I do with some other trades, I would definitely be uh, monitoring the trade um, live and uh, making sure that my stops hit, my profit, target, my profit targets uh, triggered. Um, yeah, and that's basically it. So those are the factors that I want to mention. If you have any questions or comments, uh, absolutely kill it. Yeah, thank you so much. I appreciate it. I wanted, just want to say I really appreciate what you said with regards to um, making sure that you're not measuring uh, your point of exit for a gap trade with where the previous day's action was, especially if we have a gap yes. like ARMS. I think that's why ARMS is a really good example because the, the, like the, it's a better chance that you'll get closer to open than wherever you were before the earnings, right? Sure. Especially when you have a move like ARMS. So that was something I would have I would have probably asked about. So I appreciate you saying that. And I think that's a really good point to remember as well because that's you're, you're giving yourself a little bit too much wiggle room there, oh, yeah. right? So I think that's a good point and I, I do appreciate that. Um, little food for thought, but yeah, I think I, I learned a lot and I think it's a really interesting, very volatile strategy, but certainly one that if used correctly and if you're monitoring it, if you're watching it over like you're babysitting this trade, mm -hmm. uh, like it's your niece or something, then I think it can be like a really probably effective strategy. Amazing. Yeah, yeah. thank you. Uh, and we'll be repeating that, guys. I know we just dropped a lot of information. Obviously, you can go back and rewind. You can listen to it again. The beauty of YouTube. Uh, but we'll be doing it once every hour, one o'clock and then, sorry, 12 o'clock and then one o'clock again. So if you didn't catch all of that, or you're just coming in a little bit late, we'll be going over that again. All right, time to talk about TSLA here because it uh, looks like we may be finding some resistance here at 191. Um, but before we get to that, I think we got a super chat. Willis Addison, my man, $2 super, ch super chat. Let's Ooh. go, Roku. Roku swings, uh, PayPal. Uh, ER puts, all right, earnings report puts. Okay, so let's have a look uh, quickly here at Roku and uh, PayPal we already covered in the morning. R-O-K-U, let's see what this bad boy is doing. All right, decent. What do we get here on Roku? Do we have a headline on Roku? Roku's been moving the last couple days. Um, Kathy Woods, 
portfolio. Ark says, no, I don't see any specific Me things neither. on Roku today. Um, nor do I see anything from yesterday uh, that important on Roku. No. So we'll just look at the technicals. Um, let's first of all look at the 30 minute here on Roku and see where we are on a general trend. So we're a bit consolidative to tell the truth here, at least for the last little while from say December onwards, we've had about an 85 low and maybe a 95 high. So about $10 worth of range, but we did break above that range today. Okay. So this $95 area was a good resistance level uh, basically until the, the later part of December. So good look, they're breaking through that range um, yesterday and continuing through that today. 95 gets taken. Yesterday, we couldn't break 95 on a closing basis. In fact, we dipped into 94 and a half on Roku. But today, we definitely have that continuation through getting up into about 98.50. Okay, so where do we find resistance here on Roku? Well, this would have been my initial resistance area over here around 96, this trough going back to December 13th, but that got taken. So what's the next level I have to look at here? Well, the next level is gonna be that $100 level because that's the 100 even dollar level and I'd say we definitely may encounter resistance at 100 bucks. So from here, from the 96.79 we're trading at into 100, I don't see any uh, resistance. So if you're holding this for a swing, maybe you wanna wet your beak and take some profits off at that 100 and then hold a piece for the dream. But good luck for Roku here on the wider frame because it did take 95. That was a key resistance level, having been touched once, twice, OB thrice, and then even four over here uh, back on, what day was that? January 24th. So good luck for Roku on the day. Uh, shout out to you, my man. Good for uh, your print there. Now let's have a look at Tesla and see where we should expect resistance north of 191. Well, lo and behold, Adara, you're gonna like this. Look where we're topping out at. Again, trust Ooh. the teal. The teal, this is resistance Quick. level one on pivots. And uh, we've been seeing this a lot more. The pivots come into play. So a bit, a bit of a triple top right now off pivots, and that's a random number uh, from which to reject off, 191 and a quarter, 191 and a third, but it does happen to be pivot points, so it looks like, I don't know, traders, algos, using this level, uh, much like us, to either take profits or initiate shorts, but we've got a few topping tail candles right now coming in at that level, and down we go into 190.50, so we are encountering resistance right now on Tesla at this level, so we'll have to break through um, resistance level one on pivots for me to look for a different level until until and if that level is broken that is going to be the level that i look at a day yeah instead of a wick shimmy dance just trying to like touch the the pivot point there it's like the root raising the roof <laughs> the but it's not raising the is. roof i think that's an interesting look also i think it was dvdr4 uh or something like that in the chat earlier saying, um, I think that was on that Tesla move up. Elon said, hold my beer, Disney. And I think certainly like uh. a good analogy there, Disney having its run, Tesla being like, um, excuse me, Cybertruck here, beep, beep. And uh, beep, beep. trying to usurp them there. Let's look at Disney. Oh. Let's see how the House of Mouse is doing today. Oh yeah, House of Mouse, no slouch here up at Taboro uh, Cherry, Mr. Shreve uses sometimes the no slouch, not the House of Mouse. Um, up almost 12%. This is a nice look. Chop and churn. And I mean that, of course, we're up on the day, but I mean like also technically it's an easy chart to read, which is always nice because sometimes these earning charts are just like to the sky or to the moon. But Disney, I like this. It's easy to read. You have this move, kind of kind of consolidate, chill out a little bit. Blah, blah, blah. Big move back up here right at the start of the midday. Uh, looking like we're going to consolidate again for a move up. This is not super rangy, so not something I would super have a trade in, but I think really good look. Congrats to anyone in Disney. Sean, I know, is in Disney. Uh, really fantastic look here. Also, I want to look at um, NVIDIA, because when do I not? Also, I, I have to address <laughs> some I, I WM things, but I'll do that in a moment here. NVIDIA, looking kind of compression-y. Uh, if it was rangier, I'd be interested, but... Really, I just want to see that this lower high scares me a skosh. Mm. However, we did wick up into that 706. So that gives me enough wiggle room that I'm like, we could get back up to 706. But I just know from the end phase debacle yesterday that sometimes if, if, if we're a couple cents off, you know, you can still get a little bit, you know, slapped around the face in the face there, a little bit rinsed. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Just because it's really about how you set your point of exit, especially with something like NVIDIA. This is something I want a little bit more confirmation on. However, I do like that hold of that 70350-esque. So that would be an entry point for me should this hold up. Um, I want to mention one quick do. thing. 
Um, Erjola, and if I'm butchering your name, I really do apologize. Uh, Erjola or Erjola uh, says, thank you for your knowledge on Strangle and Straddle. I straddled Disney when it was around 96 and just want to say thank you because wowza, we're gonna spend the money for you. Very pleased that we could help you make some money because that's really the only reason we're here, okay? So thank you so much for your nice comments and I hope you continue to print and you continue to make money. Um, and anything that Adara and I could help uh, shed some light on, we'd be very pleased to do that. Big Kyle Burdett, NQ Short, 17890. Shout out to Big Kyle Burdett, basically taking top wick on the NQ today. He's already 30 plus points in the money. I hope you print. Trading Bulldozer, do you think PayPal can reach the low of 50.25 in the next days? Thank you, you wanna have a look? Yeah, let's look at uh, PYPL. Also, we did get involved in NVIDIA, so I'm just, we're just gonna chill. We'll see if it's a win, NVIDIA. If she goes below 703, we're gonna have to, we're gonna have to be out, NVIDIA. But PayPal, uh, sorry, what level on this for PayPal? Oh, sorry, it was 52, 50.25. 50.25, yeah. okay. So, yeah, I mean, I, I'm going to go straight to the, the daily here. Also, I like, you know, PayPal, to give PayPal some credit, we tried to recover in free market. Nice center step to the upside. The market opened and PayPal ran screaming for the hills. Uh, if you were a short, though, you did get paid on PayPal today, let me tell you. Or even if you went long in the pre, that's actually not a bad look. So we're looking for 50.25. Um, it's been a... Let me see here. Yeah, I mean, I think... We're certainly in a downward trend to begin with. The lowest I'm kind of seeing here is around that area you identified. So it's a, uh, that 50.25, so it's a little bit hard to, to gauge here. But I mean, if we're looking at the general trend of lower highs, lower lows, that would be a lower low because that was our previous low. So I actually do not think that's a bad look at all here. We also fell decisively below that 58 area I identified as kind of a double bottom earlier fell decisively below that with it. What with is that level there? That is about that 50-25 okay, more or less. Yeah. That's why I said, I think, you know, if that was the previous low and we're looking at lower highs and lower lows, I think you're spot on with your level. Absolutely. Sir or ma'am or person. Uh, thank you very much <laughs> for uh, for that. I think I think your analysis killed it. All I'm going to say is I, I totally agree with what you're saying. Would you advise them to take some, uh, or not advise, because we don't give we any don't financial advise, advice, yeah. but if you were put in that position, would you take the majority out and then leave a piece for the dream, so to speak? Yeah, I would probably take, because we, we know what I'm like in general as a trader, uh, mm -hmm. you know, advice or no, because we don't give advice. I think the big thing, I always talk about this, I always like taking some or all out at previous resistance or Bang. support. So with that in mind, that 50-25, I would definitely be, be hiding my money away. <laughs> but I, I agree with you being like a piece for the dream potentially after yep. that level, especially if you're looking at the logic of lower highs, lower lows. But yeah, I would definitely be like that 50, 25, I'd be like counting my money and yeah. maybe running a little bit there. Uh, but I think that's a fantastic look here on PayPal. And I think yeah. you killed it with the, your great technical analysis on your part there. All Dang. I can do, all straight, what I can do here is just echo and smile and, and nod here. Cause yeah. great, great job for you. Also NVIDIA, oh my God, I'm so proud of her. I feel like a proud mother hen. Mom. Um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she. We're gonna we're gonna get our little beak water ready here because we're coming into my first area that I want to take out some profit. Uh, basically, just try. Like I said, I'm gonna be cognizant of the fact that a we've had lower highs in general, and b that 706. But we're definitely taking out some profit at that 704.99. Like I said, especially with something that moves like an Nvidia with the spread of an Nvidia. I am not giving this to 705 for my first beak water. Depending on how we test 705, then I'll see what I want to do with the rest of this. But we are. Uh, uh, a simulator dollar in the money here. Please just punch, happy with the point of entry. Also, IWM um, coming back off VWAP. I'm not gonna get involved until I see some more confluence here. Basically the range fell through. Uh, instead of, I should have shorted here. What I was thinking though is because we were curly, we were seeing lower highs. I was like, oh, we're gonna, you know, try to go for the breakout of this. We didn't break out, we broke down, I got out. Mm. Just a, you know, a risk management type play. Nothing too fancy schmancy here, but, um, but just, you know, got out of that trade. Happy with um, Mademoiselle NVIDIA. I heard some punching on Tesla. How was that going? Just put another profit taker there at the third of a dollar, Adara. That's, uh, you know, assuming we take 191 and we continue to head north. We're having issues uh, to be expected at the whole dollar right now. Somebody in the chat was telling me 191 was a level on Tesla going back from days. So we'll have to keep an eye on it to see if it continues to ascend. Uh, now, we have to do uh, some housekeeping as we typically do. Uh, thank you to uh, Jimbo Slice for giving me the results of the four-week and the eight-week bill auction. Not auctions that are awfully, uh, you know, 
uh, market moving, but ones that we'll report on. So the four, the four week got the exact same print that it got last time. So did the, no, the eight week came in a little bit higher than last time. I don't know what their current price is because I don't follow those treasury yields. Now, Barkin will start speaking. Uh, it looks like here is scheduled Fed member Barkin starts talking at 12.05. So we'll keep an eye on um, his comments there. Once, uh, once I start getting them on my news blotter, we also have the 30 year treasury note auction, a big boy. This is the longer dated treasury yield auction. One that I closely follow, one that the market closely follows. We get that at one o'clock. So we may have some market moving uh, stuff here at one o'clock. We also get the Fed's balance sheet, but that comes after the, uh, the close. That comes today at 4.30. So for our purposes, we have to worry about uh, FOMC member Barkin speaking at 12.05 and the 30-year auction uh, scheduled for one o'clock, the only housekeeping items we have on the day. All right, continue to watch as these markets uh, trend. Uh, Dan was telling me uh, we got an NQ IB high bounce, calling it mechanical. Um, uh, shout out to him. Uh, good observation there. We'll see what uh, the future ends up doing, whether we get a 17.9 touch. Yesterday we were talking about 17.8. Today we're talking about 17.9. The NQ is up one fifth of a percent. The ES is down 0.13. The Dow getting slapped down a third of a percent. And the Russell, you know Adair is in that bad war was, the Russell is up almost three quarters of a percent. So the Russell, and I, I called the Russell the kid that no one wants to play with today, ah. right? But maybe today uh, it's uh, it's got some special toys or something people don't <laughs> want to play with, I don't know. There we go on Tesla, Adair. We get the beak wetter there through 191, 33, 39, excuse me on our way up, still holding a sizable amount of this position, not de-risking too much over here, looking for that move up. So we're still, we're getting that 191 and a half break. Where do we top out at? Let's see if we can make it into 192, please just punch. This is up over 2% now, and we're almost $3 in the money uh, on Tesla as it continues to pump up here. Let's see what we get at the whole dollar. Yeah, money, money, money for Sharif. And you're right, I am currently um, playing with the child that no one wants to play with here. Um, <laughs> I did like how we kind of held at VWAP, but I am cognizant of the fact that this could be a head and shoulders. I only say that because we had a shoulder. Then we had a very large block squarish head. <laughs> then we came back to the same area, so that could be the neckline. I'm going to be really cognizant. I am not taking this anywhere beyond 195 because that was a huge area of the hold. That's why I was playing that that range earlier. I know resistance can become support. Support can become resistance. And I am not going to resist uh, that pull there. So we're going to be getting out should we reach that 195. Uh, and if we break below this 194.60, 194.50 area, basically the range around VWAP, I shall be saying sayonara. I will not be tussling with Russell any longer at that point. <laughs> um, also, uh, I want to look at this super chat. Thank you so much to Jose Mercado. $10 super chat. Much appreciated to uh, you. Whitney and Hollow, crazy. Do you think it goes back up to 50? Yeah, these two are so insane that I didn't want to, like, you know, hurt one's feelings by only putting one of them on the watch list. Because they're both holographic names, they both got a spot on the watch list. So shout out to them. Um, and shout out to you, Jose Mercado. Let me pull up Hollow and Wimi. I'll tell them now. Um, also, while I look at this, DVDR43 tagging us. If Trader, T Trader TV Lives ever has a sports team, it should be called the Beak Wetters. I mean, I don't think either of us are I don't think we'd scare too many teams being called, because the sports team's supposed to be like, but you know, our mascot you a, would be ducks. It would be like a scary looking duck. I don't know, but that doesn't instill fear <laughs> in the heart of your opponent. You know, we got to, we fear, like the reason I called Fabian the Chilean nightmare is That's like, true, fear him, nightmare. you know what I mean? Like yeah. he's the nightmare. But uh, yeah, I don't know how the, much the ducks would be feared, but. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, certainly I, I'm a little bit scared of Holo and all this, this um, or Holo. As you know, as Neil was saying, we have to call it Holo because YOLO. But I think, wow, like th this, this gap down really hurt us because other than that, we were actually in a range, which is sometimes staggering for these small caps to behave in such a way. We have this nice move up, then we fall with the viciousness. Oh, yeah. Oh. Uh, I got to, uh, sorry, I, to interrupt you, Adair. The Katina man is short arm, okay? So the Katina man has taken a short position now on arm, and it is coming off those highs of days. We're just going to pull up arm real quick. Sorry to interrupt you, Adair. Oh, it's okay. No uh, I just wanted to mention the Katina man's position. Katina man, uh, where are you short, and do, do we... 121 short, the Katina man is. Uh, any, just holding it? 
He's got a 115 bid. It's three dollars in the money. So you know he may be wetting his beak here uh, on the way down. Is it looking to break 118? We're awfully close, Adara. Sorry to interrupt you. That's okay. That's <laughs> that's that's quite a look there. Yeah, beak. of course. Um, I think, too, with, with hollow, the, the thing is we're kind of coming back into that previous area of support, that 27. Could be support becoming resistance. In terms of your question with regards to um, going back to 50, I think we really need to break above this 27 before I can give any kind of take on that, especially because 27 is around where VWAP is right now. Mm -hmm. Let's look at Wimmy. Okay. Um, oh, Wimmy is a penny stock. I didn't even, we're, we're below a dollar on this, Ed. Who boy, I would say hollow is a little bit more of a chance of, oh. a little bit more signs of life than Wimmy here. Um, are there any updates on that trade? Yeah, Katina Mays out of the half of the arm trade through the break of 118. Hit it, hit it, hit it. George Washington doing his thing, baby. <laughs> yeah, no, we're all doing our thing 21 over here. And yeah, I think this um this 90 cent bottom is is quite the look here on Wimmy. We come here earlier, we push back up, then we chop and turn a little bit with that 106 base. Come back up, make a higher high of 130. We cannot sustain it. We fall back below. I also would contend this might be a bear flag. We go from 118 to about what uh, 90 cents. That's a little less than 30 cent uh, wiggle room here. Now we're chopping and churning. I would be. I, I would say of the two, I would not get involved in hollow uh, unless you know. Depending on what we do at 27 dollars again, not financial advice, just my chart read. Wimmy looks a lot riskier to me, uh, but both of them make me. They would both make me a skosh nervous. But thank you so much for your um, super chat. Uh, Jose hey. Mercado and I do think that these these holographic names is giving each other a nice little boost today. Also, I am in I'm like I'm still rustling here. We're tussling with Russell. We're getting wrestling, close to my point wrestling. of exit. Also, I never even addressed my Nvidia fat finger out. I did okay. mention it in the chat, but um, it, you know I was trying to get out of some of it, and then we accidentally fat fingered out of all of it. It was about you know a little less than um, a simulator dollar in the money, so no complaints there. But I did want to address that. I'm going to be really watching what we're doing at that 706, but I'm not shorting this. I'm not range shorting this. I would like to make that clear. For the record, uh, Your Honor, I have no interest in, in going <laughs> short honor. at that 706 failure. I have learned my lesson from trying to shorten video when she's when she's good and strong. However, I have no problem um, going long again if we come back to that 70350 and we hold it. That's my take there. Also, Guilty Gunner. What a name. I love that name here in the chat. Um, 199 Super Chat. Uh, DraftKings. I almost said Donkey Kong and I had to stop myself. DraftKings. Crypto announcement. Next earnings. Crypto and an emoji. Uh, that I, I don't, I can't tell what that emoji is, but it looks like a little hot maybe, um, but, or an alarm. Uh, but what is that emoji? What? Uh, in the super chat from Guilty Gunner. I'm trying to figure out what emoji a that casino. is. A casino. Oh, That's it's a, a casino. Slot. Yeah, it's a slot, isn't it? I missed that, yeah. Um, but yeah, I think that is a, a yeah, that, I think that is a slot. I'm pretty sure, yeah. It looks like a slot. But yeah, no, thank you so much for your, for your super chat there. Um, Guilty Gunner. I'm going to look at the wider range of this, and I also want to see what the specific story is here Go for it. on the King of Drafts. Um, on, on Bitcoin? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm not seeing anything specific on this from today, but I think, yeah, I'll look at the daily here on DraftKings for you, um, Guilty Gunner. I think... Uh, oh my god, yeah, certainly this is this is a strong move. This oh, yeah. double bottom oh, at yeah. 32, not to be ignored. Whew. Yeah, I mean, talk about we've had this 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 uptrend actually for a while now. A good uh, look, eh? With the yeah, Great fantastic look. look. Yeah. Uh so I would say we almost started in December 20 uh 22, curling up. We had a little bit of an issue here trying to get um above in in July to about November, we stagnate a little bit, then November to remember, pushes up right back up. Fantastic look here. Um, I think I think regardless of the specific news, I think this is a um, a fabulous look, this um, this DraftKings. And I, I agree with you, I think that could be a good move. Oh yeah, Guilty Gutter, clarify, it's crypto gambling. Thank you so much for the clarification there. Thank you very much for your super chat. All I have to say about DraftKings is um, to the moon, question mark? I don't... I think it's a good look. Yeah. No, and they are. I mean, we're coming on Super Bowl. We got Super Bowl this weekend. I mean, like, there's probably going to be a lot of betting, this, that, and the other. Guys, um, let's talk about some small caps because we haven't mentioned any of the small caps, and Holo is going again. Oh, what so is there's, there's a plethora of small caps to mention today, Adara. And when I sat down, the first thing I said to Adara was, did we have a triple-digit winner yesterday on the small caps? Yes, we did. And then we ended up having almost four this morning. Guys, they come in waves. These small cap gappers, for whatever reason, they just come in waves. That's all you need to know about them. So once you get one that's outsized, look for the next day, you probably will have a few 
that are outsized as well. So just be prepared for them if you like them, if you don't, ignore me. All right, first one, H-O-L-O. This has been a, a monster. I mean, I couldn't believe when I got home yesterday where Holo was because CNBC kept repeating Holo uh, on its ticker and like there was nothing in between it and the next ticker. It just kept repeating Holo, Holo. And then I looked, I'm like, what the, you know what? <laughs> uh, why is this thing up at 50 some odd dollars? And there we go. We topped out yesterday just through the break of 50 on this topping tail candle here. It took us to 51 exactly and then uh, we retraced off that level we didn't break through yesterday's high so today technically an inside day on holo we're not through the lows we're not through the highs we're ensconced in between somewhere there so let's have a look at the one minute here to figure out how we get in on this trade if at all number one you wouldn't have caught me taking this long off 18 or whatever because it was sub vwap it also hadn't broken the pre-market high the pre-market high today 41 and change. Actually, sorry, that's incorrect. No, no. The pre-market high was 41.95. But essentially, you know, it really popped at the bell there. So this this candle over here is 928. So it's two minutes before the bell that it made that high. Anyway, you wouldn't have caught me taking this bad boy long. We are at VWAP right now. Uh, rejecting VWAP, we halted. We came back down on that initial halt up on VWAP. We went into about 27 or 26 and two thirds. We're trying to fight through 25 right now. If this reclaims VWAP, we could have that kind of rounded bottom shape and then maybe make tests of 40 bucks or thereabouts. We'll have to see what Holo brings on the day. Awfully strong, awfully volatile, but you have to obviously make sure you are managing risk appropriately here. Some of the other ones that we're moving today, Syria, C-Y-R-A, Syria, yeah, I don't even know how to Syria? say it. Syria, 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 yeah. To me, I just say Syria. <laughs> this one didn't break the pre-market high at 910 there. It got to about 979. It hasn't broken that after the bell. This one to me is not tradable, okay? It's also below VWAP. Two things that I have for my uh, small cap gapper rules, they gotta break above the pre-market high. There has to be a defined level in the pre-market from which we can break after the bell, as well as gotta be above VWAP. This one fits neither of those criteria. Therefore, to me, it's not tradable. Uh, I'll leave it uh, to be. MLGO, another big name, was up triple digits this morning, now about 80%. This one, same thing. Uh, it's below VWAP, but it did, I believe, break the pre-market high after the bell, and it did. So the pre-market high, this one would have been excellent if I had been watching it. This one had a pre-market high of 108, okay? A dollar and eight cents, and that was made at 715. And then it did break that, it broke it quite decidedly after the bell there, and it gave you quite a nice move up into 169. You profited quite nicely. So if you had taken, say, a 109 break, and you had gotten out at 169, that's a 55% move uh, from the pre-market high to the top after the belt. But right now, it is below VWAP. It's struggling to stay above a dollar. So to me, still not tradable. It's got to get above that VWAP. WETG, this one was another big mover earlier today. Uh, it is now only up 32.5%. It popped up into that 465, but this one has been suffering from a lack of liquidity essentially the entire time. So to me, this one, too dangerous to trade. I'm going to stay away from it. HKIT, I know Nimit was yelling to me about HKIT when I was at the big desk this morning. This one did all sorts of stuff, 200 and 92%. This one started running yesterday in the aftermarket and continued its aggressive move. Uh, subsequent to that, at 4 a.m. this morning, it started pumping. The pre-market high is where? The pre-market high is 775. It didn't break the pre-market high after the bell, and it's below VWAP right now. Therefore, HKIT is not tradable for me. It looks like some of these small cap gappers are all going to be pre-market wonders, and they're not going to be... Uh, you know, there's no continuation for these bad boys, it looks like, after the bell. So we'll keep watching, see if we get anything uh, interesting to trade um, right now on uh, in small cap world. Otherwise, we'll continue to nurse this Tesla trade, Adara. That's now come down below 191. We'll see what comes of this.
Yeah, Tesla, I mean, I think that, that yeah, it definitely one you have to nurse because it calls for Tesla for a reason. Someone was saying Yesla in the chat. I forget who it is, but props to you. Uh, I know Sharif is definitely saying Yesla because I actually heard him saying um, something to, of that equivalent while I was up at the big desk and I called to sit down and I'm like, so I'm guessing you're in Tesla. And he's like, yes, I am. So nice look there. I am in video. Uh, sorry, I'm not even in video. Dara, I just got too excited about the pun. I am in meta. I'm in meta. I'm we're okay. There, it's no sweater right now. No sweater and meta. But um, but yeah, I got involved in this uh, 469.85. I liked A, that that was that previous top because we know I like to use those as my in sometimes if, if we're going to do dip buys. And B, I liked, I was watching the book. We held this area pretty well. It's a little bit disheartening when you have your, your resting profit taker. You have the beak wetter that you know, ready to dip in. And then we just blow right past it and then come right back down. We're holding this level like a glove though. Hold I'm not on. adding to this position uh, unless we, you know, we take some out first because I want to get some profit before I, I start reloading here. You know what I mean? Uh, that being said, I do think we can come into this level. Basically the plan is to kind of sit at this level, get some out here if we get back to this uh, previous high and then add and kind of go as we go here where I entered. Zach Frack asking about arm. Let's see. Let's see. I mean, we were strong arming the market with this one earlier. <laughs> oh, okay. This is interesting to me. As a range person, I kind of, I'm going to sit, I'm doing my sit up thing. I like this. Uh, we should probably mention on arm that only 10% of the company is actually tradable. Oh. So SoftBank is holding on to 90% and that's why we're getting such a parabolic move here. That makes sense. Yeah, we have sub 100 million float because they've only made 10% of the company tradable. So I just wanted to point that out. Probably has something to do with why we're up 55%. Yeah, thank you so much for yeah. mentioning that. I, I appreciate that. Yeah, I think with this one, what's interesting is we had um, this double topish at 124 and sort of a double bottom around that 118 area. So that could be a bit rangy. Again, the, the volatility of this makes me a little bit nervous to play. And by that, I mean just how it's an earnings move. Um, and also, you know, who knows if this range will hold up, especially if the range we're talking about is $6. As someone who is very comfortable literally scalping pennies on Tesla, this is a little bit much for me. But no, I think it's, I think Zach Frack, I think I would really be cognizant of what we do with this. 118 but the fact that we're we're kind of struggling at this 90 ma we like bounce right off the 90 ma is probably a little bit concerning i would be cautious um on this one just because it is a little bit volatile nick w is asking nick about marvell so shout out to you also i'm just watching meta on my side chart and i'm you know liking i would like it to make up its mind um <laughs> because we're just waffling here that is neither here nor there but just something that you know a little bit of a sweater but but mostly no sweat um yeah so no news on marvel right now up almost five percent i'm assuming on this ai hype this we're you know we're riding this 90 ma beautifully just this you know this nice trend this stutter step to the upside let's look though because i know with nick w i'm assuming you're looking for a swing we're gonna go oh my r.i.p my chart just one moment there i was gonna look at the daily and the weekly on marvell for some potential levels here um thank you but yeah, okay, so, ooh, okay. Marvell, I think this is interesting. I, I think the fact that we're coming into a potential area of resistance, that previous top of 73, could be of interest. Other than that, though, Marvell, um, from October, like a lot of these, having this in November to remember, we blew past that previous area of consolidation and resistance, that 55. Swoop up here, um, higher highs, higher lows, with the exception, though, potentially of this 73 area, because this is quite the move to the downside from there. I'd be really cognizant of what we do at 73. I'm going to look at the weekly here as well. Okay. Um, yeah, weekly. Okay, weekly is a, is pretty interesting look here as well. I think this this area of... Um, this 45 area is weirdly interesting to me in Marvell. I don't know if we're going to come back into that, but just my chart read. Be sort of a double bottom here around that 45. Then we come into just above that as resistance. So I think that could be key. We come back up here to 65 which was also a previous bottom. So I think that's interesting. 65, again, support becoming resistance. And then we come back up into this uh, 72 area, which is not going to be necessary, or 73 isn't going to really be resistance on the weekly like it is in the daily. This 76, though, I'd be interested in because that was uh, there, certainly a previous high here that we got in March 2022 here uh, that week. So I think this is, uh, yeah, March, yeah, March 22, 2022. This, this previous weekly high of 74, 75 could be interesting. So I think basically my read on Marvell is really strong, but certainly coming into some potential areas of resistance on the wider time frame. That's, that's my look there on Marvell. But yeah, nothing else to report from me other than um, Meta. Please get your life right. Um, all right, great. Uh, 
Bbot5000 asked a really good point. He's like, is there, um, when are the other shares available for ARM going to be tradable? Uh, Neil and I did that check this morning to see when the blackout date was. It's essentially six months from the IPO. We Googled it this morning, and it's about March 12th. We should have, uh, that. that's the end of the blackout period. I'm not sure exactly how many shares are going to be available at that time, uh, but keep your eye out on that day if you're involved in uh, ARM or if you want to be involved in that trade on ARM. March 12th, the end of the blackout period there with SoftBank. Nimit asking me uh, to look at Roma. Roma is another small cap gapper that we have been talking about for weeks and weeks. It's been, you know, reappearing on the scanner, um, you know, in, like every once in a while. Let's see what it's doing today. Uh, ba -ba -ba. It's up 28.5%. R-O-M-A is the ticker, like the city, Roma. Katina, man, how was your trip to Roma, by the way? It was amazing. The Katina man says it was ridiculous. Uh, warm. Too warm, though, he said, because he did. You went midsummer, though, yeah. right? Yeah, he went midsummer. I remember that. Yeah, I, I still haven't been to Roma. I definitely, I still haven't been to Italy, period. I definitely want to make a, yeah, oh, yeah, Italy's definitely on the hit list. Um, no, but with respect to Roma, guys, uh, look, Nimit, you know how my rules are. I'm not saying that this is the only way to trade small caps, not by a long shot, but with respect to my rules, they gotta break the pre-market high and be above VWAP for me to get interested. Right now, Roma printed $1.40 at 725 AM this morning. We haven't broken that high subsequent to the bell ringing. In fact, we've been making lower lows and lower highs. So just from a trend perspective, we're on the way down. Also in Emmett, we're south of VWAP. We're doing the dance right now with a buck, trying to get back above a dollar. It's been fighting its way, uh, you know, trying to creep up above a buck. Initially here, it broke through VWAP and the buck um, at around, what time was that? 1040, 1050 or so. It did retrace. We'll see how this one does. But until it breaks the pre-market high and stays above VWAP, Roma, not tradable in my books. Uh, but that's just me. So we'll have to wait and see what this one does. I've got it up on the side chart here. If it starts moving, I'll be notified. Now, Tesla bouncing off that 190 and 150 area. It held it. Now we're hopefully moving back up into that 191. I've got a profit taker here sitting at 191.69 because what is life without easy, <laughs> right? We're looking for that move up back into the 191. I likely won't de-risk anymore until this profit, tar uh, profit taker is triggered. That is the red line here on the top of my chart uh, with this circle. That means profit target. Yeah, you get it? You know, a little target there. I actually just noticed that. Oh, I like that. Yeah, I, I, I actually didn't notice it until right now. Like, like actually target, like, you know, the store targets, their oh, thing yeah. is like red with the target. In. Okay, Yeah, with I'm a little sorry. puppy, a uh, bullseye with, puppy, yeah. yeah. Probably belaboring that a little bit too much. But anyway, Tesla, keeping my eye on this one, looking for that move up. We had a bit of a hammer candle form here on the five minute look. Let me just show you exactly what I mean. This is the candle that I'm talking about right here that printed at 1150, uh, where it tried to dip into 190 and 150, and the buyer said, No, you don't, and pushed it right back up there. So that's awfully bullish from my perspective. What I'm looking for is a break and hold above 191. I didn't like these two candles here, the one that printed at 1135 and 1140 on the five minute look. These were topping tail candles showing that there was a lot of short interest um, during this time and it brought it right back down. Is that the end of the, the short push? We'll have to wait and see, but th this resistance level, resistance level one on pivots is absolutely coming into play today as a level of uh, you know encumbrance here on Tesla We'll have to wait to see if we can get above that 191 and a quarter. That's what I'm looking for. The Fuge, though, doing its part, it's pumping back up to the high side. 17.89 for the high. We're at 8.86 at the moment. I, you know, I think, you know, based on where we are and based on the fact that we're printing higher highs and higher lows, we likely get a 17.9 touch some point in the day today. The question will be, Adara, do we see 18? Number one, do we see 18,000 on the NQ March contract? And if we do, is it tomorrow or do we got to wait till next week? I don't know. I know someone was saying we were going to get 18 in that day a couple of days ago. I know you're talking to someone that mm -hmm. chat about that. That did not come to fruition, but I think no. certainly, uh, you know what I think? I think it'd be, it'd be nice if the, if the NQ and the spot kind of rally into the end yeah. of the week, but I definitely do not want to diagnose any moves prematurely. Yeah, of course. I think it really too, um, I'm trying to think if we, we don't, I don't think we have any big NQ names reporting um, in the next couple of days either. Do we have anybody to, after the bell today? We have a firm. Okay. Uh, affirmative. We also have pins. 
A firm is going to be very interesting. That's very I, I'm very curious about that because oh, they yeah. were one of the um the big. I believe they were the biggest um tech company with a market cap of above five bill in terms of market cap gain last year over 400 percent uh, to the upside. So the point I, I, I use that that stat that I loosely remember mm. to say like you know this is a, a company that's certainly very strong and or at least it was previously, but it's also pretty heavily right. shorted. So yep. I think it oh, could yeah. be. I'm really curious about those earnings. Uh, we'll have to see if they if they affirm the shorts um the shorts takes or not. There. And just from a fundamental perspective, I think a firm is setting up good here. And here's why: credit card debt all time high. Credit card higher interest, right? We're talking twenty to thirty percent interest. But a firm, for the most part, you get these interest free loans. The only time you pay is if you miss a payment or something like that. They charge you an admin fee. So a lot of people could be diverting away from the high interest loans into these low or no interest loans. And that's why I feel a firm might have a good economic climate to do well. We'll have to wait and see because they can take large, uh, large losses, loan losses. Delinquencies are up. We know that car loans are delinquencies are up. Credit card delinquencies are up. So that could translate to problems for a firm as well, not just the credit card companies. So we'll have to wait and see what we uh, what they guide today. But very, very interesting look uh, on a firm. All right, a couple of comments there in the chat. Dan the Man Emmons says, June contract already trading at 18120. So the June contract is the one that we're going to roll over to on March, what, what day is it? March 15th or before that. Usually we're, we roll onto the new contract before the expiration of the, uh, the current one. So the other one is already trading above 18,000. Leroy Jenkins, why do you still like this trade after it broke the high and moved straight down and broke the range low when your trail would, what would your trail normally be? So look, here's, I, I'm assuming you're talking about Tesla, Leroy. So my trade clearly here would have been at that 189 and a half level. That's where we kept top, uh, topping out to before we got that decided break at around 1115. So my trail is going to be around right here, right? So we didn't give up the ghost at 190. I was looking at the whole dollar level as, as well as this top at 189.50 to see how we did at the whole dollar level. It didn't even come down to that whole dollar level. But you know what? If it breaks the whole dollar level now, then I'll have this high over here and then a lower high. And I already have a low here. And then I'll have another lower low. So that will probably be the end of the trade for me on TSLA if it comes into 189. Or sorry, 190 breaks it decisively. I'll probably end the trade there. But good question. I, I, I see why you're asking that. It didn't show me too, enough weakness really to be like, okay, you know, I got to get out here. Uh, especially, and I, I also pointed out this candle here, Leroy. Uh, this candle was uh, quite, you know, indicative to me uh, that the, the bulls were like, no, you don't. We're pushing it right back up. This is kind of, um, this is what we, not a hammer candle, obviously, but it's a candle worth showing you that the bears tried to push it down owing to these two candles here and this red candle and the bull said, no, you don't. So we'll see. We'll see if we can get above that 191 and a quarter. That's clearly been the line in the sand on the day. Uh, it is pivot resistance one. So we can get above that. Uh, I'll, I'll let it run. Um, Mr. Fife says, could Tesla be a bull flag? Yeah, kind of. Uh, you know, just because we see a, a potential bull flag doesn't mean that it is, uh, you know, just because it manifests into what I'm assuming you're talking about this candle here at 1110 that really jettisoned up and then this sideways consolidation. To me, I would just look at the higher highs and higher lows and I'd be like, this is an upward channel trending up with uh, higher highs and higher lows. You guessed it. Here it is. Oh, let me just adjust that bad boy a little bit. And here it is. So that's kind of what I'm looking at there. Higher highs, higher lows, rather than looking for uh, an actual specific trend line. I mean, uh, pattern, excuse me. So we'll have to wait and see what that one does. Um, Tesla's still at that 191, nothing to report there. Um, here we go, arm breaking up apparently. Let's have a look at ARM. Yes, it is coming into that 122 area. I'm not gonna get involved on arm here, guys. I just don't have a proper read on it. It's too extended for me to wanna go long. You saw the Katina man take $3 short there. He's obviously got you know skills that I don't have, so I'm not gonna just jump into his trade. Um, but yeah, ARM, obviously it's a monster. We'll talk about that and much more when we do get back from the real deal. Is that slow enough, Ramran? With Neil. Welcome to the real deal. I remember the shades today because it's important to be chill 
relax and pack your patience because everyone everyone knows that a patient trader is a profitable trader. It's easy enough to say that. Be patient. Wait for your setup. Wait for your entry. Wait for your opportunity. Wait for your edge. But you've got to figure out ways to be able to put that into practice. So if you're having trouble being patient as a trader, I want to give some ideas as, as to how you can and try to improve on it. And, and the first thing is to recognize that we are who we are. Like we're human beings and we're not robots. Right? So whoever, whomever you are as a person, as a trader, personality type, risk averse, risk taker, you are never going to eliminate that from you altogether. What you can do is play into your strengths and try to limit and minimize your weaknesses. That's what you can do. You, you don't change who you are overnight. I mean, my wife can try all she wants. It's just not going to happen. I try to do my best, but you, know, you are going to be you. So the first thing and what everything comes from this one concept, at least to me, and I think a lot of traders you might hear talk about this, create if-then statements for your trades. It is one thing for me to say, I am looking for a long in Tesla. Okay, that's great. Um, I, I want to go long Tesla. Where? Why? How? Who? What? Like all that good stuff. So it's not enough to just say that. What price do I want to buy it at? What conditions need to set up uh, for me to want to execute off of that price, where is my stop going to be? If it gets to, if it goes in the money, what is my what is my plan of action? So the first is why do like how am I going to get into the trade? Now, if I'm just buying a dip, that could be off a support level. But I'll give you a more fluid example here because I like to have these lessons always refer to something if I can that happened in here today. So Tesla, I wanted to see relative strength. After the last couple of days, it had been dumping at the open and then catching a bit of a bid. So I wanted to join strength if it started dumping, not try to catch the bottom. But I wanted to see a few signs of strength. One, makes the wipeout bottom and recovers. So, okay, well, it did that pretty clearly. Then I wanted to see it hold VWAP. And then after a clear VWAP hold, I wanted it to be able to hold a consolidation on a top breakout. So... The initial trade was it gave me the wipeout bottom, there's your higher low, there's your VWAP hold, and then there is your top. I wanted to, if it breaks the top, and anyone that was watching the live show, my condition was breaks the top, give it to the local bottom on that test, scalp the range, and then try to hold for more. So it doesn't hold that range. At that point, I'm out of the trade, but I still want to be long Tesla. So what I'm not gonna do in that situation, or what I could do, you could just say, do the same thing, take the breakout of the high of the day and rinse and repeat the same trade. But the breakout trade didn't work. So I stopped and tried to come up with a new entry concept, which was not going to be taking a breakout, but rather a dip buy. And you might hear me say this, if breakouts aren't working later on in the day, try to join a trend with a, with a bit of a dip buy. So it's a very nuanced uh, trade, but it was a different if-then statement. So all I cared about is after I stopped out, I wanted a higher low to hold, Hold the higher low, bid came back above the 189, so there's your low at 188.80. Once it held the 189, I jump in there, there is my scalp, scalp the range, and then go higher. So I went from, let's take a breakout and give it to the local bottom, to wait for, wait once it's bringing that break, wait for it to put in a higher low and give it to the next local, local bottom where you're getting the bottom of the trade. See, when you do this, suddenly you're not just going to be punching in at random prices or without a stop. So I always have an out before I get in. I have an initial target before I get in. And on top of that, I'm able to adjust on the fly if the breakouts aren't working for me. So like I said, an if-then statement should be something that you can coherently say, this is what I'm going to do. And the best part about that is if you happen to be a beginning trader, let's say you've just started out, maybe you're paper trading and you don't have a SIM account or whatever it might be, if you have to develop these, that allows you to back test your strategies and forward test them because everything you're doing is pretty non-discretionary. It has to do this before it does that, and then I get in, this is where I get out. So you can, if you're, as long as you're honest with yourself, you can really test your strategies without just sort of random entries and exits, whether you took the fills or not, because you know the conditions that had to happen for you to get in uh, or not. And I think one of the other things that you got to consider uh, when you're doing this style of trading is what do you do 
And this is, it's not always an easy thing uh, to consider what am I gonna do when conditions change, when things, go, when things go wrong. But you should ask yourself, if conditions change, what am, I go what am I going to do about that change? I'll give you an example of something that didn't work out for me. So I wanted, I wanted the VWAP by the dip here on Mara. Like my initial uh, plan was gonna be if it holds VWAP, higher lows, I'm gonna buy the dip in, in front of support on VWAP. Now, what I ended up doing here is changing a condition. You can see I didn't hold it to VWAP on this trade because Bitcoin didn't hold 45,000. So my initial thought, now this ended up being the wrong decision, but I didn't want to get wrapped up on this technical trade when Bitcoin didn't actually hold the level. So what, I sh what you must do in a situation like this is take a step back. Okay, well, my original idea was holding. It's still holding VWAP. Come up with a new condition as to, as to my entry. Find a support level on Bitcoin if I want to be finding, if I want to do that if this level makes a higher low on Bitcoin, re-enter the trade off of VWAP. Like you've got to set a new condition for entry if your first one either doesn't work or you essentially bungle it. Now, obviously in this particular case, I'm saying I could have found my way back in, but let's take a step back for a second. What I did was change my condition mid-trade because of another indicator. So when you were reviewing your if-then statements, I can't just say, oh, well, that was silly. I should have held on to the trade. No, the answer to that question is I should not have been anchoring this trade to a round number on Bitcoin. I should have had some more nuanced reason to get out. Maybe I needed it to break a significant amount lower underneath that $45,000 level. Maybe I needed to allow it to bounce off VWAP before taking the entry into the trade. So when evaluating that if-then statement, it's not as simple as, oh, the trade didn't work, I'm just gonna throw Bitcoin out. Uh, the, or the trade bounced off VWAP, next time I'm just gonna hold it to underneath VWAP. You wanna be a little bit more nuanced in that. Maybe there was something to Bitcoin bouncing. It actually did bounce off for, uh, just underneath that 45,000 level. So you make these adjustments, never throw out the baby with the bathwater. But if you, if any trader cannot explain before they enter a trade, I need to see X happen, then I will do Y, and if Z happens, I am out, and if A, B, and C happen, I'm taking profits. If you can't go through and explain that in your trade, then you shouldn't be putting trades on because you're just, you don't have a plan of action. And if you don't have a plan of action, you're gonna get rinsed. The market is more than willing to punish you for not having a plan of action. And when your plan is, when your plan is wrong, you need to be honest with yourself as to the reason, not just, oh, it didn't work, I should have held it to VWAP, as I'm saying here. No, it's the specific reason I get out didn't have to do with VWAP on Mara. It was 45,000 on Bitcoin. So you need to evaluate that part of the equation first and why I didn't do it. And then I can worry about the, the VWAP portion of Mara. Right? So you just make sure that you're doing it step by step. I know it can be tedious, but at the end of the day, trading is, a, if you want it to be uh, your job, if you want it to pay your income, then you've got to treat it as such. And that means trading, taking every trade seriously. That means making every decision a serious one. That means evaluating, it, evaluating every decision. You've got to take it seriously and make sure you're going through all those steps. It's simple enough to say if then statements, but I've seen way too many traders not take the time to do it. So that's the real deal. You want to be a patient trader, create if then statements that you can explain in detail with nuance so that you can be objective in your trading and then evaluate yourself properly. Good luck, traders. That should be renamed Hot Lines with Neil. Yeah, Neil's Man, spitting hot fire. Dropping absolute hot fire there. If then statements, absolutely couldn't agree more. Thank you very much, Neil. Insightful and informative as always. Adara, while Neil was talking, we did get a couple of profit takers here on Tesla through the break of 191. So it's a good look right now on Tesla, but we're still continuing to have issues with this 191 level, which is pivots which is resistance level one on pivots. I de-risked a little bit here, still holding a decent position. So, you know, we'll, we're gonna let this one run, see if we can uh, 
profiteer a little bit more, maybe through a 192 break, okay? So that's the first thing I want to mention. The other thing I wanted to mention was that Katina Man brought this to my attention during the real deal. Disney is absolutely pumping to the high side. What midday slowness? There is no midday slowness here when it comes to DIS. This thing continues to rock and roll from its closing print yesterday south of 100 bucks. Uh, yesterday we did close out at 99.13 or thereabouts. We just made a high of day on Disney right now at $111.74. It has been basically tattooed to this 10 EMA right now. If you picked up a dip on the 10 EMA, you have been rewarded from essentially any time after 9.50 onwards. It has maintained the, the 10 EMA uh, just for, you know, however long, three hours almost, okay? No, not almost three hours, nine and a half hours. Anyway, we'll have to wait and see what the resistance is that we get on the day. We haven't quite made it up to 112 yet where the players dwell, but we'll have to wait and see if we can get right back up there. You have, you have no idea what I'm talking about. The 112, yeah, I did okay, get that. Okay, so you did yeah. get it. Okay, all right. I just wasn't sure. It was a little outside. It took me a moment, and then I was like... <laughs> Uh, there is that 115 as well that we could uh, look at here on the daily. This is the daily chart on Disney. This takes us all the way back to about last year. We have not been at these levels uh, since essentially last year, uh, February, early February. So exactly almost 52 weeks of the day. All right. Um, where were we on this level over here? February 2nd, the high was 113.53. Okay, so we'll have to wait and see what we get. But clearly we're coming into that possible resistance level on Diz. Let's see if it holds, number one, the 10 EMA. And if it does, whether it continues into that 113 area that we earmarked as resistance. Arm curling right back up. This one's actually holding the 20 EMA quite well. Change line thickness, go to three, thank you. This one as well, so people can see it. Just have to change the thickness of these lines momentarily here. Yes, so this one holding the 20 EMA and right back up it goes above 122 on its way to possible resistance here at that 124 level. We got um, a bit of a double top there. Look, even though 126.58 is the high, look where the closing prints are on the five minute look. They're all south of 124. Therefore, 124 is the real resistance level on arm. Keep your eye on that, see if we can break through it. Um, but it has been a monster name on the day. Let's see what Tesla's up to. Yeah, we're still dancing with 191. Nothing really to report there. Anything you want to add before we uh, get into the lesson again, Adira? Yeah, I mean, I have to say, um, we we got, you know, feel a little bit, um, we got rinsed on that. That's what I'll say on that. I was trying to find a more polite way to put it. Uh, you know, we got rinsed. We, I was watching, I, I wanted to say, I was keeping an eye on that 469 break. We broke. Then, of course, we get right back bought up. That's okay, though. You know, as 21 Savage says, um, making less, uh, taking less L's and making more M's. And believe me, I, I need to have that ingrained in my brain right now. In this NVIDIA long, um, right now, if this goes below 703, it is no longer valid. Shout out to Sharif. But for now... We're talking about earnings oh, gaps we, okay. and filling these gaps and how do you fade these gaps? And um, we, yeah, really excited to talk about that yes, for sure, especially with so many in the wild examples. I really, really happy we're talking about earnings this week when we've had, you know, a certainly momentous occasion. We had five of the Meg 7 report last week. And yes. now I think we are, we're really cooking there in terms of full on earnings season and some big ones coming up tonight as well. We're going to be in pins and needles with pins, Expedia. <laughs> A firm, I think, um, really exciting earnings season. And maybe for trading tomorrow, you can keep some of these tips in mind when we get to that. But I think, yeah, really excited to get to uh, the second iteration of this lesson. Yes, absolutely. All right, let's get right to it. Today, we are talking about the strategy of fading the earnings gap. This approach involves taking advantage of the initial price gap that occurs after a company reports or releases its earnings. Fading the earnings gap, you have to note this, is a contrarian strategy. So by its very nature, you are going against the trend, okay? Where traders here are anticipating the reversal of the initial market reaction, aiming to profit from the stock price reverting to the, its pre-earnings levels. That's really the move here. And what I'm showing here on the chart, Ram Ram, is uh, the arms gap that we got yesterday through that 77 print that we had, and then we skyrocketed opening up this morning at around 94.58. So between yesterday's closing price and the earnings gap this morning was about 24, 
24%. That is the gap there. 24% gap. That's how you measure the gap. You're looking at the closing price and the opening price is subsequent there. So what is exactly an earnings gap? The earnings gap refers to the difference between a stock's closing price before the earnings announcement and its opening price after the earnings report. A positive earnings gap occurs when a stock opens up higher than its previous close, while a negative earnings gap is where the price opens up lower. And the market reaction here is very important. So the initial market reaction to earnings can often be exaggerated uh, due to the surprise element and the influx of new information that's coming up from the earnings report. Fading the earnings gap involves going against the initial trend, expecting a retracement in the stock price. So you, let's talk about why maybe uh, the, it's a good idea to fade. Uh, again, I don't personally take this trade, but that doesn't mean it wouldn't be profitable for others. So why fade? Well, volatility. Earnings can often cause high volatility, creating the, uh, the potential for quick profits. As day traders, we are seekers of volatility and there's no bigger volatility, um, not no bigger, but one of the biggest volatility events definitely is earnings. There's also a mean reversion trade to be had here. Markets tend to revert back to the mean. So, so a large gap might be followed by a correction. And there's also short-term imbalances that occur when you release earnings reports. So the gap can reflect short-term emotional reactions, not the long-term fundamentals. And that's what we get sometimes with a huge move after market, a lot of people punching in, algos being turned on to take advantage of that. And then, you know, sometimes later when the earnings call comes on, we come back to earth a little bit in our expectations. So why fade, volatility, mean reversion, and short-term imbalances. You need to be aware of those, okay? Before you fade, here's what you need to consider. Analyze the company. Understand the earnings report, understand what the analysts ex are expecting from that company, and look at the company's overall health. You can look at uh, revenue, um, the, the, the chart for revenue, the chart for profitability, the chart for PE, EPS, uh, uh, what's it called, uh, free cash flow, etc. Do your analysis to figure out, is this company healthy or not? Or is there too much exuberance? Is this a fade the pop kind of a, kind of a look? Or is this, uh, does this actual pop have legs under it? Look at the company specifically. And check the volume as well. High volume during the gap indicates strong conviction, making a fade risk here. If a lot of money is punching, a big money is punching in after hours in pre-market here, there's probably some sort of legs to this, whole, uh, to this whole move. So make sure to keep your eye on outsized volume. And set stop losses, guys. Limit potential losses if the trade goes against you. And so you have to be able to gauge where you're wrong and where you're gonna take profit, all right? And then manage risk. Make sure your position size is adequate or is appropriate given the amount of volatility that we do expect, okay? So you, you have to look at the equity name itself. You have to look at what the volume is. You have to look at the price and you need to be able to manage your risk through position size. Questions or comments there? Yeah, so I think one thing I think that's interesting that you said that I would like yeah. to um, kind of comment on a bit is the uh, with regards to looking at the whole report. I think that's important because I think it's very rare that reports will be overall good or overall terrible. Sometimes it's one thing that will be moving the market more than the other. So again, I will talk about this once again, October 18th, 2023, the day of the faded Elon Musk earning call oh, yeah. for Tesla. That was probably what moved that stock down 10% more than anything in the report. Uh, so I think that's certainly of note. Also with regards to Disney, maybe some of the market exuberance there for Disney has to do with all the other announcements that were made, including um, someone whose name is Taylor Swift, maybe you've heard of her, um, getting that Disney deal <laughs> with uh, with regards to the, the Eras Tour being shown exclusively. Yeah, me too, sure, <laughs> that I roll. The Eras Tour exclusively being shown on Disney+. Plus. Yes. Also, uh, worth note there with Disney, beyond just the, the general uh, that share buyback, which is really important, we also had the Epic Games, which Sean was talking about. Uh, basically, the point I'm trying to make is there are so many different little caveats to each earnings report that it's good to get a whole, whole general sense of the picture, and then you can get a better sense of what the market might be reacting to individually, because oftentimes... Right. You can't react to the, the entire earnings report because there's so many different things and so many different directions of sentiment. Absolutely. So that's my take on that. Well said, Adara. Um, all right, and then when to fade. Let's talk about, we just talked about um, before you fade 
and why you should fade. Now we're gonna talk about when to fade. So typically you're looking for gaps that are exceeding three to 5%. So larger gaps suggest stronger reactions, potentially leading to larger corrections. So I just finished showing you how to measure this gap over here on, um, on ARM. If Ram Ram, if we could show the chart, if you, thank you. Uh, so basically on my platform, all I've gotta do is drag and it shows me the percentage up move. So we said about 23 some odd percent. This one clearly fits within that three to 5% look. I'm talking about ARM, the gap on ARM from yesterday to this morning. So we're looking for gaps that are, what the hell is going on here? Ugh. We're looking for gaps that are exceeding three to 5%, okay? We're also talking about unexpected earnings. Big misses or big beats can often create emotional gaps more likely to revert. So if, uh, if we have an absolute, you know, uh, if we, if we were, uh, the analysts were looking for a miss and we got a beat in the other way, maybe there is some sort of correction coming here because analysts are still looking a certain way while the price is pointing a different way. So keep your eye on price and analyst divergence, okay? And then conf use confirmatory indicators. Use technical indicators like the relative strength index or Bollinger Bands to help confirm the momentum. So for example, if you're seeing higher highs on the price chart, but you're seeing lower highs on the RSI, that's what we call price RSI divergence. Look for key technical indicators like that. Now, we talked about when to fade. Here's when not to fade. Trending markets, be careful with trending markets. Fading a stock, especially a strong one, against a trending market is risky as the trend might help actually continue the stock forward. So even though, you know, if, if we had been in a consolidated market, that name could have retraced, the fact that the market is trending may help propel the stock up, even though maybe fundamentally it's, uh, it's not warranted. So keep your eye on markets that are trending. And I would tell you right now, the NQ, the ES are trending, okay? So... <laughs> that should you should that should give you a little bit of a direction there and keep your eye on gaps that are driven by news catalysts not earnings okay so news events outside of earnings might sustain the gap direction so for example if we had a new product launch that's going to sell i don't know how many millions of different units that fundamentally changes the balance sheet the the revenue of that company and so that gap may not get filled because that changes the landscape for that company entirely. So keep your eye on that. News driven gaps are to be looked at with suspicion. Try not to fade those. And low liquidity. Lack of volume can make entering and, exit and exiting positions quite difficult. You need to have liquidity, especially if you're gonna participate in the pre-market or in the aftermarket when earnings are released. Earnings are not released during regular market hours, guys. They're always gonna be pre or after. So keep your eye on liquidity. If there's a lack of liquidity, stay away from the name. Questions or comments, Adair? Yeah, I think I think that's a really good point um, with regards to, to trending markets and things that are trending beyond earnings. Palantir being a good example here. Palantir had that earnings reaction, of course, on Tuesday. You know, Sean was... Um, very into the Palantir movement. I think even the Palantir hat may have been worn at a time there. <laughs> and I also think what's interesting though too is I remember everyone was reacting to this move we were trading. And then I think it was Ian David in the chat, shout out to you, was like, hey Adara, is there any other news on Palantir? Because it just got an extra pop. And there was extra news. It got another $650 million contract the same day as the earnings. So that would have been a gap you would have wanted to stay away from. A, it was really strong and B, we had that extra pop. Oh, Another yeah. thing I think is interesting too um, is, so is that the same like regardless of what direction the trend is for um, um, you know, uh, being aware of gaps that are trending. So let's say it was we're down on the day and we're also in a bear market. You wouldn't want to really fade that pot back to the upside, right? Or yeah, fade it, the gap? exactly, right? Because if the market's pulling, uh, if it's coming down, even though the news report, the earnings report was positive, it may have the effect of pushing it right back down as there's overall negative sentiment in the market. Conversely, if we are trending up like we are right now on the ES and the NQ and have been since the begin, since the end of... I love it that. ended up not being October, it ended up being downtober, but essentially October 31st was the day we started moving up higher highs and higher lows, and that will have obviously um, you know, a very bullish effect, even though the earnings report was not that great. Like look at Apple, Apple is a perfect case in point, right? It, it didn't miss it, huge, it beat on revenues, but the China was down. Uh, we had uh, we had services down, or it wasn't down, but it didn't meet expectations. There is, uh, 
you know, concerns with respect to iPhone 15 sales, this that, and the other, and we've already filled the gap to the high side on Apple. So that's exactly what I'm talking about there. All right, let's move on to the execution aspect of these trades. So you're basically waiting for the market to open. I personally wouldn't get involved uh, pre or, uh, or after market. Wait for the market to open, observe the initial price movement, look for signs of overreaction or an unsustainable trend in the direction of the earnings gap. Keep your eye for that, keep your eye out for that. And then enter the trade in the opposite direction, betting on a retracement. Look for a key level, a key resistance level for a long or a key support level for a short that's breaking. Um, this can be done through short selling, obviously, for a negative earnings gap or buying for a positive earnings gap. Again, I'm going to say this again. I personally would not do this trade because it is a counter trend trade. And by definition, I, you know, I just exclude those from my trading. I'm, I like to go with the trend. Okay. So that is the execution aspect of it. With respect to risk management. Stop losses and profit takers, very important here. Uh, with the volatility that comes in with this, uh, with this type of trade, the, the, the equity or the name may not be at your profit taking level for that long, so have your profit takers out to get that profit should it just spike up and then retrace back down. Conversely, your stop losses need to be in already before you get into the trade because of the high volatility of, uh, of, the high volatility of, of this uh, kind of trade. So make sure you are stop, you're putting your stop losses at key resistance or support levels and your profit takers as well at key resistance or support levels to take profits there. Position sizing, also very important because we are talking about a very uh, volatile type of uh, day for the name. Your position sizing has to be, uh, you know, it has you have to be able to manage risk, okay? So I'm not gonna tell you how, what position, what kind of size to take, but it has to fit within your risk parameters. And monitor your trade, because again, it is very volatile. It's not one of those ones where you wanna set up and then just leave and you know come back to see how it's doing. Be there to make sure that your stop loss is triggered, your profit loss is triggered, because it could go through them and maybe not trigger them. So those are the suggestions that I would make. I think it is a very lucrative style trade, but it's also very risky. As much as you can make is as much as you can get rinsed on this type of trade, Ooh. Adair. Yeah, that's a, that's a heck of a way to, to end that. And I appreciate, you know, I think that, that's hard hitting. Yeah, One thing too, proof, yeah. I wanna say off of that, and I think it really goes with what you said about a, a trade where you really wanna babysit it and you know monitor it, nurse it to health. Mm. I think that's also, you, you don't wanna overstay your welcome, right? I would no. say definitely, along with the small position and along with monitoring the trade, make sure you're in and out like a little ninja, uh, darting <laughs> in and out of those trades. You do not wanna be there for too long. I think um, I, I, I think that's a kind of a, a takeaway that I get from that as well. And I think especially, I found I find earnings season to be volatile regardless. Oh, I, yeah. I was saying to Sharif, this is my worst trading week in like a while. And I haven't even really been in any names that have reported that day, right? But I do find the whole volatility associated with earnings season uh, just to be completely honest here, to be to be very bamboozling, to I use a Sharifism. You should be harping on yourself like this. Every they, day you've been saying it's been your tra worst trading week. Well, I mean, like, don't bring your, you. Yeah. But, but, but what, I, what I'm trying to say is I think, what I'm trying to say, I, I, I'm sure it's even harder if you're actually in an earnings play with a gap fade. That's why I wanted to say that, right? I do think, I agree. you know, using using conscious and volatility, but you're right, I'm not trying to be so hard on myself. I'm just Good. trying to, you know, share, you. share my experience. Fair. But I do, I appreciate Fair. that. Thank you very much, Sharif. Yeah, how was how was the cyber talk? Peloton. <laughs> Sorry, y'all Well, I, I, Scott H. wants me to look at Peloton. He says, you know, going to go after the 450 break. I like it. We're right there right now, Scott H. Shout out to you. It was a nice pop-up off that 438 level on Piton. And right into 453 we go. We're up 3%. But you know, Scott H., you know, I, I, this is not my kind of stock. Uh, the volatility is not there. Uh, the, the actual dollar move, the dollar amount that it's moving. I mean, we have a 426 low and a 453 high right now. So, hey, look. As long as you print on it, that's all I care about. We'll see what 450 does. You're above it right now. I hope it continues to trend up. Shout out to you, Scott H. Um, Dan says, low volatility in indices at the same time in all-time highs. Trading is tough. No question about that. Could not agree more. Magic Mike, Sharif, Adara, could you please pull up NVIDIA level two on the side? It is at an interesting spot. Let's pull up uh, NVDA's level two. Here it is, we'll switch at a meta and we'll show um, 
Magic Mike, what we got here right now, it's about a 20 penny spread, give or take. It keeps changing. The top over here is the level one. So where you see that gray area and the, 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 green, the green and the gray, or it's red now. That's level one and everything below that is level two. So you can kind of see where we're at. It is a spreadier name. It's a $700 name, right? So to be expected. Um, I don't have a trade on NVIDIA on the day. Um, even though you got a hell of a bounce off that seven, where is that? Hold on a sec. Yesterday's closing print on NVDA was 701. You did get a bounce off 701 to the T, which also happens to be a bit of VWAP as well. So it could have been some confluence there between uh, the uh, closing print and uh, VWAP. So we'll see what we get there. But I have to go back to this Tesla trade and manage it, Adara, because we are breaking down below 190 now on TSLA, and we just did make a lower low. So I'm gonna have to you know, think about exactly what I'm gonna do here. I think that if this one breaks, that level that I talked about earlier, 189.50, that's gonna be end of the trade for me. We printed nicely on it, but if it's gonna come down, it's gonna come down. Nothing I can do about that. Send it out to you so I can put my stop. Yeah, no, I mean, uh, best of luck keeping the wheels on that cyber truck there that accidentally rhymed. We're, we're I guess, spitting some, <laughs> some fire here. Um, but yeah, no, you, you, you must do what you must do. Sorry, I thought of that and I had to. <laughs> but also, um, I want to talk about NVIDIA because I did take that VWAP bounce and I was really pleased as punch. Uh, this was really a case of just watching the book, uh, watching the tape. You know, we had some failed longs here earlier around that range. Then I realized, Adara, if the log isn't working at this range, if supports become resistance, why aren't you just going long into that area? Mm. And that's what I started doing. Like I said, no interest in shorting NVIDIA um, right now. I, I will stay away from that. I'm gonna keep waving my hands like a little scared Muppet over here. Will not be shorting NVIDIA on the way down. However, I have no problem um, going long NVIDIA here just into these pops. I've been piecing out this position. Patrick Lane Law saying, I know it's not something we need to share, but how many shares did you place in NVIDIA Sam at 702? So I'm not, you know, we're not sharing share size. What I will say is it was not a huge position. It's about, it's definitely within the range of my normal position sizes, but I have to say I felt pretty comfortable in this trade, even though it was, I guess, in theory, a bit riskier, just because I had my eye on the book. I was watching the book like a hawk. And because I was, you know, cognizant and um and book watching or tape watching there um or what have you i felt okay with it that's what i'll say with regards to share size here um but yeah i i'm i have to say i i don't think i'd get back in this because i feel like we're losing a little bit of steam here around this range but i have to say i'm pleased as punch as someone who's who's trying to learn to range trade i think this was a a fun little rangy scalp for me and i i, I was pretty happy with the bottom wick here at vwap mm. as well as much as i was shaking in my boots a little bit if we broke below 701 i would have had to say bye-bye but we didn't, so uh, here we are. Also, thank you, Shreve, saying, um, I will tell Adara to look since she's the Lily Queen. Uh, Elon, great comment. Thank you so much. Hi, handsome and beautiful. Do you see momentum on Lily to 800 plus as most analysts have targeted? Unicorn, unicorn, unicorn. Yeah, let's look at Lily. I was saying to the Piper earlier in the chat, I am staying away from Lily uh, for the time being, just as it, it's not an NQ name, Adara, you know this. Uh, for the time being, just because there's a lot of volatility there and I'm trying to, <laughs> hone in my trading strategy and maybe that you know means not trading a $700 plus name all the time uh that isn't like doesn't have the movement of an Nvidia but I really do like this uh this move up on the five minute but no Adara don't look ignore that look at purely from a momentum perspective I will say that the velocity with which we've grown in Eli Lilly makes me do think this one could have um solid movement to the upside why does my daily chart only show like a few days here this is very weird but um but yeah, I mean, I'm gonna see, let me see if I can pull this one up on trading view because I wanna be able to see a better look here. And for some reason, my Lily is being a little bit uh, glitchy here. Let me log into my trading view. Uh, but yeah, no, I think certainly to Eli Lilly with all these catalysts we've had, we had that catalyst with Foghorn today with regards to uh, some treatments there. Here we go, let's pop that open. Yeah, I mean, they, oh, this is the five minute. Uh, one Adara. day. Hi. Uh, uh, DWAC is squeezing. Uh, Donald Trump just made some comments. I think he's speaking now. And he made some comments about True Social. So DWAC's popping up here, up 7%. Just wanted to mention that to people. Go ahead. Thank you for putting yeah. that out there. Yeah, I mean, talk about a gap on, on Lily. Like, oh my gosh, we kind of like chop and churn for a while here. We get down, shout out to Sean was mentioning this one earlier levels on this as well. We get down to about that 570 area. Then we pop, we got a gap up here uh, coming into 
well above 600. We continue riding this high. Then we get this gap on earnings. And I mean, since earnings, we have been up. If we want to talk from where we closed the day before earnings, that's around that 666, that level that NVIDIA was a little spooked by. Uh, and then getting up to almost... Almost 740. I mean, I think this top is certainly interesting. I think this could be, you know, if we see these higher highs, higher lows, I think this could be a push to the upside. I'll put it this way, Elon. I do not think 800 is without, with, is not with it. I think it's within the realm of possibility. I was saying, <laughs> tripping up my words there. I certainly don't think it's impossible. And I think, too, the strength of, look at Lily and this massive candle to the downside. This is about eating up about $40 of movement and getting it right back. I think Lily's strong. I would not stand in her way. And I think if she wants, you know, she can get a milli volume lately all these days. This could be earnings. But I think, you know, if we see this continued momentum next week, I would say we can, yeah, I would say it's beyond just an earnings move. And it's definitely a decided move to the upside. The fact that she's making new uh, all-time highs almost every day lately, certainly a good sign, especially because it's not normally an, um, a day trade stock. All right, DWAC is moving. Brendo just sent me. Supreme Court appears poised to reject effort to disqualify Trump from the Colorado ballot. We know that that was going to be in front of the Supreme Court today. And it looks as if uh, we're getting news right now that um, he will be allowed to run on the, I, I don't I think it's the general election, not the primary ballot. Was it the primary ballot or the general election? I thought it was. I don't remember. In either case, it doesn't really matter uh, because it is a news-driven item. And there goes DWAC now up 8%. We could be honing in on 50 bucks here. We're awfully close to 50, 49, 39. The spread is reasonable right now on DWAC. I've seen it much worse, about 12 pennies, 10 pennies now. Let's see if we continue to run general election. Thanks, thanks Scott H. Um, we'll, we'll see if this one runs or whether it's just a perfunctory pop off 47. It looks like the volume really started coming in around 1220 or so. Uh, that's when the volume really start to spike up on my charts. You can see here down on the bottom right of the screen, that's when the volume started coming in. We're printing new high days at the moment, so keeping my eye, I'm gonna have to switch one of these, um, one of these small cap gapper um, uh, uh, charts that I have on my side here to DWAC because it does d deserve respect on the day. 49.50, here it comes. We're topping at 49.50 now. It looks like we could be on our way to 50 bucks today. Keep your eye on Funware as well. Excuse me, P-H-U-N typically runs uh, sometimes with DWAC. They do sometimes run. Keep your eye on Rumble as well, R-U-M. Sometimes that also has a way of moving with uh, any Donald Trump related catalyst. Coming back down to 40 right, 49 right now on DWAC. We're gonna have to wait and see whether this move has any legs or whether it's just a, a spike and fade like some of these are. Disney is absolutely pumping to the high Ooh. side. Katina man is pleased as punch over there because he's still long Disney. No, he's not, he's out, he's out. Okay, my bad. Yeah, it, it, Katina Man, it's up 13.5%. It's an absolute rocket ship on the day. I'm talking about DIS. It's looking to come into that lucky number 13. 113 is in its sights. 112.71 right now. We were just joking around earlier about 112, uh, where the players, well, this, that, and the other. Now we're almost at 113, Adara. So great move today on DIS, up 13 and two thirds percent. We'll see how far this bad boy can run. But yeah, keeping my eye on that. The Tesla trade, I'm still, am I still in it? Yeah, it didn't cross, it didn't break that um, that 189.50. Somebody was asking me in the chat, it's like, why do you have 189.50 as you're out? And this is the reason here, because we had like all these topping tails come into that 189.50 area. So I, I'd ideally like it to hold this area of previous resistance, hopefully current area of former support. VWAP, I do realize VWAP is below my, my stop. I do realize VWAP is at that 189.20 area. But that is not where I want to give it to. We'll have to wait and see uh, what we get here. And I can always get back in if it does hold VWAP. So if I get out, comes back into VWAP, starts doing that curl, getting it on the back end, as my friend Neil likes to say. Uh, we'll see what kind of move we get here on TSLA on the day. But it's been a print factory for me on it today. So I'm pleased as punch. Uh, to use as an Adaraism. But what I'm looking at right now to see if this is gonna actually move, move, or we're just gonna trend down is DWAC up seven and um, seven and one fifth right now. We were knocking the door of 49 and a half. We couldn't break that. Now we're back down into 49. The future also coming a little bit down now into that 17, 
17.870. Looks like we did reject 17.9. We have a perfunctory touch, 17.896 and a half, and then we've been printing right back down. Still very much in a sideways range here on the future, and this is what I'm talking about. Look at this sideways range here. Uh, it's about a 30 to 40 point range from essentially um, you know 10.45 onwards. We're, we're coming in, into the lows right now. We'll have to see if we hold up at this level. Zion Lala. Adara, Sharif, can we get a bang bang on Diz? Four dollars in the money. No, my friend, you're gonna get a money spin. Uh, shout out to you, my friend, Zion Lala, Print Factory on Disney. Yeah, that's fabulous. I mean, congrats to everybody involved in Disney. Disney. Bob Iger is having a good time. I am sure, just making sure my mic's all good because I accidentally brushed against it. But yeah, I mean, I got back in NVIDIA. We're in NVIDIA. Got into um, the IWM as well, just kind of ranging that. Nothing really to report on either of these, um, although. NVIDIA testing my patience just to scotch. I want to see us stay above view off. That's certainly my area of interest. Um, also, some super chats from earlier from Mike Crahan. Sorry, I missed these earlier. Stop, save lives. 100% agree. That's $2 super chat. Another $2 super chat. Son of General's no primary. Water, Thank you so much. Sorry, I did not see these until right now. Uh, always appreciate uh, the super chats and the support. Um, and thank you so much for being an active participant in the chat here. Uh, yeah, I mean, so many people mentioning D-Walk here. Uh, Rumble is terrifying. Kick is doing way better. Let's see what Rumble's chart looks like right now, actually. Rum, um, let's see how we're shaking. Ooh, okay. We're getting close to that earlier high, that... Um, that 826 area volume on this is below four mil. Uh, but I have to say, what's interesting to me as someone who likes ranges is this 808 bounce. This is not a name that I would get involved with, mind you. I think I would be um, immensely stressed out just the way that it moves. But I think that 808 VWAP ish bounce that we've had this whole way through really threading that nine EMA is, I think, a fantastic look here. Um, also, Stefan Insight saying, I, I robot squeeze. Let's look at I to the R to the B to the T over here. Um, ooh, okay. Yeah, I mean, the thing is the volume here on this is a little, like, I, Eli Lilly actually has higher volume than this, which is kind of, today anyway, which is kind of um, surprising to me because I know iRobot has definitely been all the rage, or at least definitely it's been on people's minds since the Amazon deal fell through. But yeah, we're just shy of the $13, right about $12.95 um, right now uh, on the day. Seeing a bit of a double top, higher low. This could be a flat top breakout, but I don't want to diagnose anything that hasn't happened yet. I will say, much like how Disney was dancing with it, uh, the EMA all the way to the upside, I would say iRobot is doing more or less the same with my nine EMA here, although this flat top could be very interesting for us. I want to look at the daily chart here to get a sense of this one's movements out. Ooh, you can really tell when we got that announcement about the, the deal falling through. Um, yeah, I think if we do run, I would be extremely cognizant of that $40 level because this is a this is a, a, an area of resistance if I've ever seen one. Uh, we had a little bit of resistance here. We spike up, we come back here, and then we kind of fall back down. See these lower highs while still maintaining this top lower high. We come, we gap up, and then we come back to this 40 area. And the 40 was just shy. I guess about 38 is from where we begin that fall from grace. First with the rumors of the deal falling through, and then the official fall through or fallout from that deal. Yeah, I robot. Um, I think if we do, if we do squeeze here, it's gonna take. It's going to take more than hope and a prayer, let me put it that way, uh, to get back to that 40 level. And that 40 level to me seems like a massive sticking point on the daily chart. So I would absolutely be cognizant of that. Meanwhile, these IWM and NVIDIA trades might need some TLC. So I'm going to be taking a look at those here. Universal Codes, I like that name. Tesla found a new bottom. Let's see how, how our pal Stressel is doing. Ooh, ooh, okay though. Sorry, I got excited. <laughs> Tesla coming into 189.20. Uh, and I know that sounds like a random level. And it was like when you were saying that 188.80 yesterday, sometimes these Tesla levels get a little random, but right. why is this interesting to me? Look where we topped and turned earlier before that move up. Look where we had this consolidation earlier, around 189.20. Mm -hmm. So I think I said 192, I meant 189.20. But I think, yeah, I think this could be interesting as an area for Tesla because resistance can become support, support can become resistance. And, and we're inching in closer to VWAP. And that we was are. like, that's what I was talking about, Derek. If I got out, which I did, exactly at 189.47, which is, you know, within the, the range of uh, error here because I usually leave a 10 cent buffer between my triggering price and my limit price on my stops, especially with these volatile stocks. We're right at that 189 a third, 189 a quarter. That is VWAP on my chart. Uh, it's not over here on this chart, it's at 189, but on my, my side chart, it's about 189 a quarter, 189 a third. We're holding up at the, this level. If we start curling back and start finding support at this level over here, 
and uh, you know, getting it on the back end, so to speak, as Neil likes to say, I'll re-involve myself in TSLA, but at this level, I had to draw a line in the sand. Even though I was long 188.90s, you know, I had room to go uh, into break-even territory. We're along around right here, right? Yeah, 188.90 and change. We're gonna keep watching um, as, uh, as the market came down though. Like, look at this move down here on the future on the NQ. Uh, we had that big candle that dipped almost in the VWAP, uh, pretty much almost at VWAP, 17.850, so it was that 50 point level. We had a bit of a consolidation area top here earlier on the future uh, that we're look, maybe we bounce off. You're not gonna catch me uh, trying to catch a falling knife at this level. It's gonna have to prove to me that it's gonna curl back up, but I know Big Kyle Burdett was taking that uh, top short on the NQ. I hope he's printing here as it comes back down. Take some profits, Kyle, because you know, well, we're, it's a bit of an, uh, yeah, the, the day is like kind of indecisive. We're only up 0.1 on the NQ and down 0.12 on the ES. So a bit of a day of indecision now uh, on the future. We'll see if we run through 17.9, but right now we'll have to contend with what we've got. So no trades for me at this moment. Uh, I don't like anything in particular. However, there is this consolidation dance that NVIDIA has been doing with VWAP. Look at this 71. 701, excuse me, 50-ish, uh, 701 and two-thirds area. Every time we dip into VWAP on NVDA, it is being bought up. However, we have to keep an eye on these lower lows that it's continuing to print. So look at this peak over here at 706. Great. And then look at this peak over here at 705.50. And then a lower peak at 704. So we've been printing sequentially high, lower highs with that flat bottom at that 701 and a half, do we get a flat bottom break and give up the 0.25 that we have in the green today on NVDA? We'll have to wait and see. I'm not gonna guess either way. It's gonna have to manifest for me to actually get in, but keeping an eye on NVDA because it does look like it may be giving you at least a range trade here off that 701. Is that what you're doing? Oh yeah, this range She got excited been... as soon as I said range. Oh yeah, sorry, I wasn't trying to interrupt here. I All just, good. yeah, this range has been, been very nice for me. Yes, and don't forget, Adara, we have an auction, guys, Ew. at 1 p.m. It is the 30-year Treasury note. It is one of the most followed uh, treasury uh, treasuries of uh, that are available. Obviously, the 10-year and the 20-year important ones as well. What we had yesterday was a 10-year, 10, 10 and it was a bit of a nothing burger. We did get an algo spike up and down, then we ended up continuing in the same trend. So we'll have to wait and see. Currently, the 30-year, what the hell? Oh, okay, so this is the old 30-year. I need to put the new 30-year here, that's why, okay. So we're gonna go 30Y, and we're gonna go futures, and we're gonna go continuous contracts. Why the hell is the 30-year closed on my thing? Hold on, I just need to figure this out, because it's telling me the 30-year is closed? That's very weird. I know, I'm, I'm kind of confused. Anyway, whatever, for whatever reason, I can't, I can't load up the 30 year on my platform, so I have nothing with which to compare it, but anyway, the last, the last print was 4.3 on the, on the uh, 30 year. Last time around, we got 4.229, so the 30 year was a bit higher than the uh, last print on the auction. Okay, so we'll have to wait uh, about eight more minutes, and then it takes about another five minutes or so for us to actually see the results of uh, the of the, uh, the auction. So that's coming up eight minutes or so. We also had, uh, or have, one second here, Fed, who was it? Barkin, Barkin already talked at 12.05. Let's see what he had to say. Um, Barkin, there we go. This is all from today? What the hell? Yes, it is, good. He spoke twice today. Yeah, so here it is. Uh, these are all coming after 12. So these are all new uh, headlines from Fed Barkin. Fed Barkin says Fed can take time on decision to cut rates, needs to see more data to build confidence. Inflation is falling. No one wants inflation to flare up again. Inflation has surprised to the upside before. Okay. He goes on to say Fed uh, Barkin says upcoming inflation data is likely to be favorable. Upside inflation risks are still around. Recent economic data has been remarkable. Possible path back to 2% will be bumpy. Okay. 
says business contracts less worried about recession risk, firms more stable on employment, sees less pricing power. Obviously, pricing power refers to uh, increased prices, or which obviously equates to inflation. Ample evidence Americans continue to spend, and that's one thing Adara and I are talking about when we talked about all-time credit card high, credit card debt right now, Oof. and how that could affect uh, a firm positively. He goes on to say, has confidence to uh, to cut will be driven by more inflation abatement, says we'll learn a lot about inflation over the next six months if inflation goes back to 2% amid strong demand, which signal higher neutral rate. And last but not least, tries not to pay much attention to stock market. Yeah, right. I don't believe that. They, they, you know they're looking at the market. Oh, you know they are. Yeah, oh yeah. So those are the comments coming out today from Fed Barkin. Nothing else uh, here, at least on my news blotter right there. That's what he's barking about there. Speaking of news blotters, I would love to give a shout out to our good pals at Benzinga uh, because we do appreciate them. I have PLTR up, so I was looking for that story earlier. They actually have that BAP co-partnership. Uh, Brendan was bringing this to the big desk earlier. Um, but also, you know what? What is the whole vibe with Benzinga? Um, I mean, you can sign up today for Benzinga Pro and you can get 50% off their premier news and research platform for retail traders. You just have to use the code TTV. Uh, capital letters, that is TTV, capital letters, and use the links in the description to go to checkout. I mean, you can find out um, also earnings. I know Sean always brings you guys the earnings after market close on the recap show, and he's getting them all coming through here. Bang. They also help when you're doing, I'm doing the watch list in the morning. We get earnings. Yeah, shout out to the recap show. Shout out to the podcast as well. Uh, those getting recorded Friday nights and then coming to you Saturday morning, whatever podcast platform you like. Ramin was telling me yesterday, hey, man. video also... <laughs> <laughs> it's a new pump in it. It's be like ram ram. But um <laughs> sorry, I I, I was thrown yeah, off. All good. Yeah. But yeah, I mean you can have video in Spotify and on YouTube there uh with your podcast, but you can also listen to it with whatever podcast platform you have. Also, oh my god, NVIDIA, um taking my breath away and not in a good way. So I'm gonna have to deal with um my prodigal child actually right here. Um, if you do not mind terribly, I need oh, to... Oh, NVIDIA's tanking. Yeah, I need to deal with her. I'm so sorry. Okay, I'll, I'll take over. Yeah, Shibuku. so keeping my eye right now on TSLA, uh, because while I've been involved in this name, and it is at VWAP. So I put an order on Tesla, a stop order here for the high side, but I'm thinking maybe I'll remove it, because typically what we get after the auction is a bit of an algo spike to the north side and downside, and you don't know exactly where it's going to go until a few minutes later. So I'm worried I get triggered in to a Tesla long when the real move here is south. So I'm thinking about removing this uh, trade. Uh, I'm looking to go long on Tesla 189.77, and I gave it about 10 cents buffer. So from 77 to 87, in case it gets really illiquid. Reason being, I was looking at this high over here and the area on VWAP. If we print a new high above this crest, I wanted to get involved. It would show me maybe, you know, that we are holding VWAP and we start curling back up, getting it on the back end. But, you know, I didn't factor in the possible algo spike here and uh, getting into a trade I may not want. So I am cognizant of that and I think I'm probably going to remove that order until we do get the uh, market reaction to the, uh, to, the, to the bond auction, which is now in four minutes. Um, we bounced off 17.850 Adara here Ooh. on the Fuge. So we are at that 50 point level. And guess what? On my side chart, 17.850 is VWAP. So there is confluence between the VWAP, I call it the VWAP, and that 50 point level. Let's see if we hold up at this level on the future, whether we continue to head down, maybe C17.8. You never know. What's up? You know I feel what? Like you I have was just, to say. No, I was gonna say. I yeah. think I know why you called it the VWAP because you just mentioned confluence, and I think you did it in honor of Obi, <laughs> psychologically or subconsciously. The Amazon. Yeah, the Amazon or the Google, or the VWAP. I should mention, Obi will be on tomorrow. He's gonna come on. He's gonna give us a little tidbit of how he trades earnings. Okay. I didn't know this. I yeah, he's gonna come on for 10, 15 minutes, whatever it's gonna be. So the Ob, the one, the Kenob will be gracing us tomorrow on the How to Trade show, and he's going to be telling us a little bit about how he approaches earnings, Adara. Yeah, I'm very excited. I heard, I know I was talking with him about his Amazon earnings, and he seemed pleased as punch about those. So I think, you know, he'll definitely have some insights there. Yeah. Um, also, yeah, NVIDIA, this was, this was rough. This was whatever the opposite of a win video is. This was a loss video that doesn't really, like, roll off the tongue, but neither does this trade. Just happy it took out some profit here, 50 paper pennies in the money on the first part of this trade. Also, people see excited there saying, confluence, good times here. <laughs> um, 
Kyle Burdett saying, Sharif, give me that money. Also, Take that money, I have baby. To, I have to shout out Bebot 5000. <laughs> Sharif could be the new Aflac duck. That was after the... Uh, Aflac. The, 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 the ram ram. Have you seen Aflac commercials? Yeah, like, Aflac. Aflac. <laughs> <laughs> and then someone too, I think it was we Don don't even Dante have that company in Canada, by no, the way. No, but we know the ads, the exactly. Aflac. <laughs> someone, uh, I think it was Dante as well in the chat saying it would be Shaflac because I guess Sharif. But yeah, I mean, I had, I just, I appreciated that comment. And <laughs> someone else saying too, you know, you can always tell if Sharif's a good trade if you hear the pump it. Yeah, well, the yeah. pump it, I guess, if you're in a short. But you, you are yeah, more long biased. Excited. So I do, I do get, ex I get excited. It's a good, yeah. it's good, it's really fun. I think yeah. it, it brings nice energy. But yeah, I just thought, I, I thought you might appreciate that comment. Nvidia. Failing 700 right now. Yes, um, and then I think Miss A is yelling about, oh, not yelling, but commenting about Femi. F-E-M-Y. This one is up 25 some odd percent, 26 now. It's just getting going here. This is the daily. Let's flip to the, um, to the uh, five minute. Okay, so this bad boy was obviously running yesterday. The liquidity, though, a little suspect on this, though. What's it done on the day in terms of liquidity? Let's find out. FEMY, where you at? Show yourself, Femi. There it is. It's done 1.77 million shares. And for a dollar stock, that's Bubkiss. So I'm I'm very hesitant to get involved in this name, even though it's continuing to trend to the high side, higher highs, higher lows. Good call out by Miss A. But I would just say, you know, be careful with the illiquidity on this name. Um, for me, you know, it's your, if you're a dollar stock, by one o'clock, you should have done way more shares than uh, one and three quarter million. So good luck on Femi. Definitely up big on the day, 26 and a half percent. Nothing to sneeze at, but just be careful with the illiquidity uh, there. Could you guys look at SoFi, Gerardo Garcia? Absolutely. Uh, let's have a look at SoFi for you. This was an earnings winner last time around. Uh, let's see what it's been doing on the daily before we analyze it um, intraday. Ugh, SoFi, ugh, that's all I can <laughs> say. It's just so indecisive, but what the hell it wants to do and where the, who it wants to be. All right, so this is earnings, obviously. You can see this, um, this green bar over here, 250 million shares. That's obviously the earnings day, and then the red candle after that is the uh, subsequent day. And we, we gapped down, quite frankly. Yeah, we gapped up on the earnings, but then this would have been a perfect fade the earnings okay so this is the Whoa. earnings day let's put in the ticker so everyone follows along and then we can make that perfect example of what we were talking about earlier all right here is that big gap up on earnings right and then the next day it absolutely fades to the downside and it continues to fade so that gap absolutely got closed Oof. i'm talking about this gap over here so so far perfect look there but it is finding some support at that 750, all those wicks into 750 were bought up, and now we're trying to dance with eight, right? I personally don't like SoFi as a day trading stock. Um, I, I don't think there's enough, you know, of a move, like a, an actual monetary move in it. And I also find it to be quite indecisive. So I'm going to stay away from SoFi, but it's up on the day. I think it has a key resistance level of eight bucks. It's got to get through, and then... Maybe we can talk. And this level has uh, been in play before. Ooh. So on the February 2nd, we did have trouble with eight bucks after the earnings gap. So good luck on SoFi, possibly on the day. We'll see. All right, Tesla right back up. Now I may get triggered into this Tesla long. We spiked up, guys. We spiked up on the Fuge. So I didn't. I don't know the results the of results, the 10-year. Um, someone put Go them for in. It. Solid visuals. Thank you so much for this. Um, I don't have Treasury 30-year yield, 438 Zero four point eight, sorry, four point three eight zero percent before twenty five billion dollar auction. Uh, that's what I'm seeing here. Uh, for I'm not sure that's the previous number. I was trying to find it as well over here for the um, the auction results. Um, also, let me let me find this. Um, sorry, I'm just trying to find the auction results here too. Paulie D saying apparently it was good news. Um, Yes, yeah, so like, also I just looked up auction results and not um, treasury auction results and then I got some like weird auction website. So, oh, <laughs> um, that was yeah, fun. that's not what you want. Uh, yeah, I don't want to like go to like the Richie Brothers. 4.360. Oh, okay, thank you. Yeah. Oh my gosh, yeah, Bears vs. Bulls like definitely the biggest candle of the day. I have the spy on my side chart because I've been, I've been spying the spy. <laughs> and um, yeah, uh, definitely the biggest green candle of the day. You are correct, Bears vs. Bulls. Oh my 
Oh my gosh. Coming to that previous area of um, resistance and we look like we may be blowing past it, that uh, 498, uh, 16, wow, wow spy, wow. All I spy is a big move, uh, big push here to the upside after kind of languishing to a degree where it was even hard to, um, to get here it a is. range on this. Thank you. So the U.S. 10-year Treasury yields fall after 30-year auction, last at 4.137. As I look at the 10-year right now, it's up 0.9, but it dropped significantly from that 4163. It's on the way down to 4132. The 10 year is coming down. Uh, let me look at the two year real quick here. The two year also coming down a little bit. So uh, the 30 year having an effect on the 10 year. Looks like yields are coming down, which makes sense. It's usually they, they're inversely related to the equities market. Equities go up, yields come down, and vice versa as well. Keeping an eye on Tesla here, Adara, as we uh, look to take 190 again. Yeah, I know some people were asking if this is good or bad news for stocks, but you just kind of explained that there. They usually work, uh, move in inverse directions. Exactly. Certainly have no, yeah, I have no trades on right now. I would like to let uh, things, the, let, let the chips fall where they may, which is funny because I'm actually looking at Avidia, which is a chip. Uh, and right now, just kind of decide what it wants to be. It's struggling with VWAP. I'm going to keep my eye on that for a short, but for now, I'm going to let her do her thing 21. I want to look at AMD because a lot of people talking about AMD and I okay. feel badly I haven't looked at it yet. But after this, I will be getting to the lesson. I just want to look at AMD okay. first. Uh, lower highs, lower lows. Um, I know this is not a very astute or a very in-depth analysis, but I see what I see here. What I will say, though, this pseudo double top at 170.140 would have been a nice range play um, heading down lower and lower into VWAP. I'm going to be cognizant of that 190. 169.60 to 169, uh, 30-ish area here too, because we were very rangy in the pre-market there before we shot up at open. That would be an area I would be watching for sure on the daily for for our pal Amd. Shout out to Sharif. Uh, <laughs> I like that evil laugh. Um, you know, I think we're kind of we're very much in a consolidative area. We've been other than this um, gap down and then almost immediate gap fill here on January 31st. Um, we've we've more or less been in this range of that 168 to 160, one to 178 area. I struggled a little bit to make a higher top of that 180. So that could be of note right now, though, really just, I would say, chop and churn here on the daily for NVIDIA after a beautiful climb to the upside. Um, Lisa Sue and her jacket giving those earnings that the market was a little bit met on, mostly because the projections were surprisingly low. Forget about the MI processor. It's the jacket we're talking about here. Now, forget, you know, they're going to compete with NVIDIA. We want to see the blue jacket. Kidding, of course, guys. Lisa Sue is a hell of a CEO. I think she's one of the best CEOs out there. And Alfred, shout out to Alfred, has been watching Lisa Sue for a while before she was actually uh, chief executive. Yeah, he knew about her. She's an engineer by, oh, by profession. That so. makes sense. Mm -hmm. So he, he was always, he was telling me about her for a while, and he's been a big fan. Uh, shout out to Lisa Sue. Obviously, turning AMD into, you know, like the little brother of Intel that couldn't get it right into now, you know, Bigger market cap than Intel. It's not an easy thing to do, right? So yeah, it's been. Her. It's not been an AM dumpster fire. I'll put it that way. It's been quite the opposite. Nice move here to the upside. She and her um, cousin Jensen Huang taking over <laughs> yes. the um, that the space for chips. Also, family. like I mean, they're both killing it. And they're also yeah. both like I saw this graphic. It's like the you know the most liked and disliked uh, CEOs. Jensen Huang was number one for most like. And Lisa Su was also in that top five, oh, top yeah. ten. So they're both very well. They both have like a, an over eighty percent approval rating according to this survey really? that I saw. Yeah, I didn't actually know so that. So they're both highly approved. Huh. And I think on the downside, I don't remember who was all disliked. I know I believe Zuck was on the disliked side. I know Evan Spiegel was on the disliked side. But yeah, I think Is in terms really? of but in terms of well, I there yeah, there's a there's some stuff I like you could your go face there. Yeah, I well, because I went down a rabbit hole on Evan Spiegel <laughs> after the earnings, and yeah, you can look at that yourself. He is not very well liked and has not been for some time. But um, but that. yeah, I will say too, Tim Cook uh, is it very highly approved. Is he? As well. Yeah, he's liked. He seems like you know like a tasteless donut to me. You know what I mean? Like he doesn't taste like anything. He's just like. <laughs> <old -fashioned> <laughs> Neil's like you don't like plain old fashioned donuts. Uh, I. I Hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah, get on the mic, Neil, because right now Tim Hortons has those uh, those old donuts, right? <laughs> One of those like. Uh... <laughs> Neil's getting ready. All right, he's gonna chime in here. No, but in all seriousness, I feel like he's lukewarm to me, right? He doesn't yeah. in, he doesn't invigorate me like Steve old Jobs. Old fashioned does. donuts are delicious. <laughs> if you ever been to like um, anyone, if you if you guys ever go to like a fair 
or like go to like a small town <laughs> um, farmers market or whatnot, and just get like a plain donut. You can put some sugar on that bad boy, whatever it is. Like, if, how do you not like the most classic, <laughs> uh, tasty <laughs> treat like uh, like that donut? I mean, you you're you're absolutely kidding me there. Like sometimes you just got to go back to the basics. Uh, just I want to give an update here because it's hard to come on and not talk about trading. I'm finding a level of frustration with this. I don't know if we can show my chart. Can we, Ram Ram? Absolutely hilarious. I just put I just put a bid in BTC, and look what happened. Like this is nonsensical. Unreal. Not even putting in slides because unreal. This out. Like I threw the bid, and then bye bye. It just started running uh, upside here. I, if it holds VWAP. We can only go long. So when I was testing things, like idioticness, like I bought this break, but I was testing stop orders to make sure the stop orders worked. So stop order worked. I report back to back office, and then it goes higher. But we're just Ugh. around. It's not really not making or losing any real money here because we are in a testing phase. But I will give an update in position. Short Intel, 4277. I am long SoFi and Funware, though. Uh, SoFi looking to bounce off of 790 here. Neil, uh, before you go, before you go, good. do you realize right now, Tim Hortons has a special. Tim Hortons is a donut shop, by the way. It's kind of like Dunkin', where they're only they they have these old-fashioned donuts. Are you aware of this? The the, the blueberry uh, fritter is one of the old ones that they have. So <laughs> Ram the Ram's going to town. Fritter, I, like an apple fritter, is the way to go, unquestionably. And if you disagree with me, then. <laughs> Fair enough. I mean, no one's perfect. You got you're wrong. I'm right. But um, yeah, I, I, the next time I'll probably get a blueberry one. Uh, but if you know me. I'll more or less eat any donut you put in front of me. Apple fritter, always number one, though, no? Way to go. Apple fritter, number one? Uh, keep crushing it, uh, guys. And uh, what the heck's going on with SoFi? It was okay. Know. Until I came, when I came on, what SoFi was, SoFi? Doing, was fine. It was pressing toward $8. Now, all of a sudden, if I shut up, maybe it'll go up again. <laughs> All right. Shout out to Neil. While Neil was dropping hot lines, Meta absolutely tanked. And I don't know what's going on with Meta, but uh, I'll look in a second. There is that V-shaped retracement off that 470 touch we had earlier. Down we go into 466. So $4.60 off the top. We're coming into that uh, that. You know, earlier level we got to 465 was the bottom. That was the IB low there at the open. So I have no idea what's going on with Meta. I'm going to look quickly here on my news blotter to see if I can get anything. But it just could be regular, um, normal price action, intraday price action. Nothing coming in here. Oh, there's something with uh, the European Union and uh, possible... Uh, because, yeah, they want to come after Meta. They want to come after a bunch of companies. The commission has already notified big tech companies, including Google owner Alphabet, Facebook parent Meta, and Apple that expects answers on what actions they can take with respect to uh, anti-competitive practices. But that's all stuff we already knew about. So nothing new there. I don't know exactly what's going on. If you have an explanation for this drop, absolutely tag me in the chat. But until then... We're going to start the lesson again, right, Adair? Yes, we are. Yeah. For one, I do want to shout out Neil in the chat here saying Intel deserves some credit for AMD success for digging their own grave. That was one from they earlier. They digging a grave. They're <laughs> changing their now. business model. Yes. He says they let themselves fly, fall behind technology-wise, but they are changing their business model. We know that they are changing who they are as a company from chip designer to chip manufacturer. They're going to be a global foundry to compete with Taiwan Semi. And that has been the stated goal by Patty G and everybody at the top uh, brass there. Yeah, no, I just wanted to, to shout that comment out before we get cooking here. So my, my chart just um, just fell apart here as I was trying to pull up this um, this arm chart. So Una Momento, but that is what I'm pulling up arm because Sharif used it as a really good example for looking at earnings gap fills here. So I've got, um, yeah, I've got the daily here on arm. It's a little bit harder to see the gap because I think this might be including all movement, but I have it pulled up here. Let's talk about earnings gap and how to fade earnings gaps. Uh, so this is going to be a contrarian strategy. So that's the first point of conscious, uh, caution, I'm going to say right away here. Um, but basically, it's the idea that traders will be anticipating a reversal of the initial market reaction and then try to profit from the stock price reverting to pre-earning levels. So I'm going to show kind of an example here on the arm. Let's do the five-minute chart because I know Sean, congrats to him, was in the, the $3 club with a short here off these levels. Because sometimes, basically, what happens is you'll have this move in either direction off of earnings. And, of course, you know, we'll mention this. We'll get into this a little bit uh, more later. But the key with this is that you do kind of have to keep in mind it, it, it's this works if it's off of earnings. 
mostly, right? It's not going to necessarily work if you have a news catalyst and you're moving off of this. But I think basically uh, the the whole idea is that you see you have this move, then the move peters out, and you try to take advantage of fading this gap here. So, so what is an earnings gap? It's basically when it's the difference between the stock's closing price uh, before the earnings announcement and its opening price after the earnings report. So there's stuff that reports after market close, stuff that reports uh, before market open. And so that can impact it either way, because if you have before market close, you might see a little bit more run up. You made arm, we ran up today, but we also had the pre-market run up and we also had the, the post uh, the market closed run up yesterday. If you saw ARM after that announcement, we went up like 12% in a matter of seconds. I remember Neil was sitting at the desk here after close looking at ARM. I was like, oh my gosh, what's happening with ARM? So the thing is too, if you have after market close, you have a little bit more time for the gap to be created because we have a little bit more run up there. Sorry. Is there news on Apple or Meta? Um, it, I, I don't know if this is new or not. That's a thing. So I, I'm like hesitant to say that this is the reason. Meta settles streaming patent case after losing $175 million jury verdict. I don't think $175 million is something that's going to move the needle with Meta here because, it, well, it's a trillion dollar company now. So I'm not exactly sure. We're going to keep our eye on Meta to see if anything's happening down three quarters of a percent. Yeah, thank you for, I just saw that and I was like, you know, let's. We'll talk about that. But so basically the idea um, of the earnings gap, including finishing this definition a little bit, I see a positive earning gap is going to occur when the, the stock price opens higher than it did the day before off of earnings, cough, cough, arm. And the negative earnings gap is when it opens lower than it did before earnings, cough, cough, PayPal. That's a nice thing too, but having so many in the wild examples because uh, we have earnings right now. So really good yes, week, very fruitful time for us to be doing this because we like in, wild, in the wild examples here. Now, the other part to understanding these earnings gaps is how do you understand the market reaction? How do you, how do you weigh the market reaction? So uh, it can be exaggerated for earnings for sure. Right away, you can get movements and then kind of settle in. Uber and Alibaba were two examples from yesterday, uh, pre-market, where the initial reaction was not going to necessarily be the same as the reaction we saw all day. Uh, and I think Alibaba, a really good example, because we had both earnings news and the news about the stock buyback program. The buyback program ran the news up, but the earnings for Alibaba were a little meh. So that wasn't really, you know, the movement wasn't going to take a while to settle. So don't, that's why it's nice to, uh, sometimes you might not want to play the pre-market action or the post-market action for these earnings because the market hasn't even decided how it reacts yet. And the market makers, the, the Kathy Woods of the world, the people buying ETFs, the big institutions haven't decided how they thought yet. So you might, you don't want to get lost in the sauce there. Shout out to our good pal Obi there with lost mm -hmm. in the sauce. But so what's the reason for fading the earning gaps? Once you have a sense of the reaction and once that reaction is, has petered out, volatility. Earnings can cause really high volatility, and then that can create potential for quick profits. As we said, you know, we're going to talk about this a little bit later as well here in the lesson, but these are really good scalp opportunities and opportunities where you have to keep your eye on the prize and you, you can't really leave your desk there or, or things might go awry. So if you're just trying to scalp quick movements, an earning gap or, yeah, an earning gap fade might be a good move for you. Mean reversion is really important as well because markets tend to go to revert to the mean if you're going to look at mean reversion strategy. Another shout out to Obi for talking us through this and the idea of uh, having magnetism for certain levels, which I think is really important as well. Uh, so you can get corrections after you have these big movements up or down. Short term imbalance is also really important because the gap can more reflect emotional reactions and not the actual long term fundamentals. This is important too, and this is why you have to understand as we're getting to the before you fade section because this is going to. Uh, fade in, pun very intended, into the short-term imbalances as well. You have to look at why did the company react this way, or why did the stock react this way? You're not always going to get an answer, but if you understand the fundamentals of the earnings report, you can get a better sense of the why. And so a good example here, too, that I really want to say is, you know, Sharif used the great example that I, you know, we've been both been talking about all week. Apple earnings were not actually that bad. They had positive revenue growth for the first mm -hmm. time after four quarters of meh on that part, but they did have those lower Apple channel sales lower iPhone sales in China. Thanks. And because analysts were so concerned about iPhone sales in China, and we had that uh, Min Chi Kuo uh, comment coming out right before those earnings, that did get a little bit dicey. And the second we got those earnings, it was like, Margaret didn't like that one piece of information. No. So that's why it's really important to look not just at the, the certain parts of the picture, but the overall picture and certain highlights that the market react, might react to in a more positive or negative way. Same with Disney. Disney, this reaction was definitely less about the numbers and more about the, the Swifties getting excited about the Taylor movie coming to Disney <laughs> Plus and all the Swifties jumping ship over there. We also had the news with Epic Games. So it's a lot of individual catalysts coming in the earnings call that might have been baked into that reaction. So it's really important. You know, I'm, I'm not using a lot of examples here, but I think sometimes they help to understand 
a moment, and I think certainly with regards to earnings, because we have so many in the wild examples, I and feel like it would behoove me to mention some. Behoove so you. There we like go. That. Thank you. Also, check volume. High volume during the gap will indicate really strong conviction, and that might make a fade riskier. If you've got like a meh volume on a gap, which some of these bigger <laughs> names you probably won't, but like I said, I, I like bringing some of the smaller earnings names um, on the big desk if they're moving. Some of those might be a bit easier for a gap fade because the volume is going to be a little less to begin with. Also, set your stop loss. You want to limit potential Dang. losses if you can because that trade can go against you. Uh, you want to really be prepared. Never. Also, manage your risk because you don't want to give too much capital to a trade, especially one as risky as this. And especially with when you have the gap fade level, you might be in a whole uncharted territory when it comes to levels. Arm is a really good example. Now Arm has basically been forming this kind of gorgeous range with, mind you, a slightly lower, higher lower highs here, but a pretty solid bottom of this 118, 119 area. But the point I'm trying to make is, when you first had this move down off that double top at 124, you didn't know where you're gonna go from there, right? So you have to be really, really cautious. Again, congrats to Sean for getting this short. Bang. And really, you have to use your instincts and you have to protect yourself before you wreck yourself with stop losses. I think that's really key here as well. And again, uh, very similar to that, just manage your risk know what you're willing to do here, and know how this could go awry for you very quickly. This is why, like I said, I, I find this earnings season has been really, um, this, especially this recent one has been rough for my trades and I haven't even been trading earnings names. So, and again, I'm a beginner, so take that how you will, but it is really definitely a season where the whole market can be volatile, let alone these names that are trading on earnings. Yes. Uh, when should you fade and when should you not fade? Uh, Gab succeeding, thank you. I like the, the bang button. <laughs> Gaps exceeding 3 to 5% um, can suggest a stronger reaction, which could potentially lead to a larger correction. Again, not always the case. Arm went from being up about, what, like 60% to being up a measly 57%. Mm -hmm. So take that how you will as well, right? It's really just taking advantage of smaller movements sometimes. Unexpected earnings can also be a good time to fade because the market might be reacting on a whim to one specific aspect. And then it might be more likely to revert because it's an emotional gap. Confirmation indicators can also really help you to know when to fade. RSI and oscillators, again, not always perfect because NVIDIA has been seen as overbought in that for a while and, and she's back up above 700. <laughs> um, when not to fade in a trending market. Uh, that's certainly going to be really key. And that's the same if you have a bullish stock in a bullish market after earnings or a bearish stock in a bearish market after earnings. These ones might be a little less likely to revert because they're also going to be reacting to the overall market movement. News-driven gaps. So if you have news events outside of the earnings, they can affect the gap direction. Again, another really good example is Palantir's cool 675 million contract announcement the day of its earnings. It already had a gap up. And I know, I remember, I think Ian David in the chat saying, hey, do you have any extra news on Palantir? And we did. So the point I'm trying to make there is this another in the wild example of something being extra reactive because we did have uh, news in addition to those really strong earnings, right? So that kept the gap higher. If you faded Palantir, you might have been in a little bit of a sticky situation, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Last but not least, low liquidity. If you don't have a lot of volume, you don't really have a lot of wiggle room to move around to do that wick shimmy dance, what have you. And it can make it really hard to enter and exit positions, especially in a time as, as cuckoo as earnings. And that's my take on earnings. Yeah, fantastic. Please. Thank you for that, Adara. Um, you know, always make sure, guys, the one thing that we, if we could drive something home, Adara and I, today, is if you're going to trade earnings, you have to manage risk with position size and stop losses. Equally as important, though, is taking profits on an earnings trade because of the volatile nature of how, it, of how a stock moves after its reported earnings. You saw what Arm did today. I can't believe I'm even saying Arm is up 57.5%. Not everything is going to be like that, though, but it just it's very, uh, you know, it's a perfect description of or perfect characterization of how volatile earnings can be. So taking profit is very important because you may not be at the profit taking level for all that long. It may be a quick wick and a retracement. Obviously goes without saying stop losses and position sizing can't be more important. Make sure you know what you're doing before you trade earnings. The volatility is real and you can absolutely get rinsed. Just ask me. I used to sit right there and I would always yell to the Katina man, and I'll be here at four o'clock because I want to trade earnings. So I had a different strategy. I didn't take it with options, but I basically did a strangle and straddle strategy using equities. And sometimes you made a lot of money and sometimes you got absolutely rinsed. And I'll never forget it. One day I was back there and I, I lost quite a bit of money and um, I was still holding the position, okay? And the, floor, the assistant floor manager at the time came to me and he's like, hey Sharif, it's time to go home. 
And I didn't understand what the hell he was talking about. I'm like, I'm in a position. I'm not going home. And then he was, that was like his implicit way of saying, close the position. You're out of the money. You have to be in the money immediately on this type of trade. Otherwise, you don't hold it. And then the actual floor manager came to me. He's like, if you don't close this position right now, you're going to get fired. And so obviously I closed it. <laughs> Goes without saying, the reason I'm telling you this long-winded story is to say you can absolutely find yourself on the wrong end of the trade very quickly. So make sure you know you're managing risk and you know what you're doing. That's all I want to say about that. Okay. So as I say that, Tesla now is coming all the way back down. So we tried to get in along here on Tesla, very quick in and out on TSLA. 189.09 we got in for a VWAP hold. It didn't hold VWAP, so now I'm actually looking short on Tesla. Now we're actually only half a percent of the good. We gave up the two some odd percent that we were up before that, and we are on our way back down through the break of 189. Where could we see um, the low today? Well, yesterday the closing print on Tesla was 187 and two thirds. So keep your eye on 187 and two thirds as a possible resistance or support level, pardon me, if you are looking to uh, short this bad boy, it could be an area where you want to take profits. So that is the look there. I don't have anything else, sadly, uh, at the moment. I'm going to keep looking. Uh, I see Taiwan Semi is up 6%. Does this have, it's probably a sympathy, I'm, I'm assuming, with ARM. Because I don't have any reason why Taiwan Semi should be running up 6% plus. Especially Chinese ADRs don't typically run this uh, time in the day. So... Um, yeah, that said, sorry, Mass Almode, TSM wrecked me. I'm sorry. I, I didn't actually see that comment before I started talking about it, but I just, I was looking at my, my watch list. I'm like, Taiwan Semi's up six, what? Uh, yeah, shout out to Greg, uh, Neil, uh, actually talking about Greg. That was who, remember the guy that I keep telling you always say, says anticipate, or sorry, participate, don't anticipate? That was the guy. That was the guy that said that. Um, lost numbers or didn't happen, says Patrick. I'm, it was a big loss, dude. It was a big loss. Just put it that way, okay? Um, Paulie D says, dang. Well, that's awesome. You learned your lesson. Very important lesson. Painful maybe. Yeah, I, I was telling Adara the, the other day. You, uh, you win or learn, right? Well, you yeah. obviously lose, but you better win. You better learn from those losses. Um, yeah, uh, what's his name? Neil saying a good risk manager on the floor has to be firm. Couldn't agree more on that big caliber debt, and that's the benefit of trading on a plot prop floor with others for oversight. Could not agree more. I may have held that position against me for another whatever d amount of dollars if I was at home. Who knows? It was only my second year trading at that time. Um, we grow. Mark Zuckerberg, 10% owner director, okay. So Zuck sold about 60, almost 63,000 shares of Meta um, for about $29 million on February 5th, 2004. Shout out to WeGrow. Thank you for uh, pointing that out because we're earlier we were talking about Meta insider trading or sorry, sorry insider selling. Um, maybe the explanation for why it tanked into 465. This is the look on, do I have Meta? No, I don't. Let me pull it up over here. META. Yeah, Meta did hold up Adara at that 465. In fact, 465.03 is the exact low there. A nice bounce. But look at this, Adara. I want to see. This is a nice hold up right at that same level that we had on the IB low. Shout out to Dan Emmons. He always talks about the IB high and low, whether or not on the futures or others. And there you go. You had a double bottom at 49.02. This time around, you get to 49.03 and right back up. Sorry, 465.03, and right back up you go. 466 now, 39 meta recovering off that low. If you were sitting there, good for you. I didn't even notice that uh, on meta. Looking to go back into view up at around 468. Let's see what meta brings. Yeah, I think that's, a, that's quite the recovery. You know who else making quite the recovery? NVIDIA coiling back up. Also, I had no idea how much I've been involved in this name today. I weirdly have a gap on my chart in NVIDIA. 
But um, really, very much coiling back up to that 703 uh, area after falling back down to 702. I want to see what we do at 704 because that's the area that NVIDIA has been really interesting. If we fail 704 again, I might short this if my chart uh, restores itself. But I am involved in the short right now, and that short is Tesla. Shout out to Universal Code saying, you know, Adara, like, look at this support level on Tesla on the one hour. And I totally see what you mean. This 188 area held it holding like a glove. So that is my profit taker target at least partially, and I'm gonna save a piece for the dream for that 187.80 area. Now, why did I get involved in this short? Um, a, I think we're holding this area up really well. B, I wanna see what we do at VWAP, should we get there. Not just because it's VWAP, but because look at where we had this, this area of support earlier, 189.20, confluencing with VWAP. Look where we had the uh, coil up before that big bounce earlier, 189.20. We consolidated around 189.20. I just realized I mentioned this area earlier today too. Uh, I realized when I said the number so many times and we're coming back into it. So mm -hmm. I think that could be really key. And I'm very much interested um, in what we're gonna do here with uh, Tesla. Uh, Ramona Garcia asking about SMCI a few times here. So let's pull up S to the M to the C to the I. Ooh, there it got loud there. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, higher highs, higher lows, Taking off the top here. It's, yeah, like it's going, baby. Flying to the upside. And Super video macro. Too. They're both going. Oh. They're both yeah. going. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. I just want yeah, to mention and, they're both going. Thank you. My, my NVIDIA chart's still doing um, a thing here for some reason. But my SMCI chart is, is spick and span here. Really nice look. Bouncing off that um, 694 bottom after, you know, doing this nice cut across the upside. So it said 700. Who? What, who's worried about 700? Not apparently SMCI. Not clearly Pushing not. to the upside. Yeah, I mean, if you got involved in this when this trend really began, let's say you bought the dip at 688, you are a cool um, $17 in the money here. So congrats to you on that. Uh, Neil playing that meta bounce. So congrats to Neil as well. Tesla coiling up, but not in, not with any vigor. I'm watching at VWAP. If we break above VWAP, I'm out. If we hold that 189.20, I shall add a little bit. We shall add another spoke to the Cybertruck. That was a very weird analogy, but there we go. SMCI and NVIDIA, are their prices are almost identical now. SMCI is trading at 74.85, 704.85. NVIDIA is trading at 704.38. Yeah, so there, we're going we're gonna to have to play a game about which chart is this, right? Without <laughs> with hiding the name, because they're got identical a little bit right now. Yeah, look, good look for NVIDIA. Here we go. It's coming into 705. We have a high a day on NVIDIA of 707.94, essentially 708. Uh, we were printing uh, one, two, three, four, five, almost six green candles on my five minute chart in a row. We do have a consolidation top at 706, despite the fact that the high of days around that 708 area, that really goes to that IB high. But for all intents and purposes, when we started trading it around from 1050 to about 1140, so for an hour, we did have that 706 as a high. So be looking to see what it does at 706. Does it respect that level as resistance or does it continue to run into that other high that we talked about 708 and change. Good look for NVDA, up only half a percent though. SMCI is the one that's up a lot higher right now. SMCI, three some odd percent in the green at the moment. But guys, these guys, don't, they don't trade the same way. I know that they're the same price. They're not even close to market cap. Um, we're talking about a $40 billion market cap right now on SMCI. We're talking about almost a trillion and three quarters right now on NVIDIA. It is a trillion and three quarters. So big, big difference between the companies, despite the fact that the actual share price may be the same superficially. So here we go, is this, a, this is attempting 705. Look at this uninterrupted move here on NVDA off that bottom. Um, and it did touch 700, in fact it broke 700 by a couple of shekels there, got into the 9970s, but really holding up 700. And where were the closing prints? They were right at 700. There goes 705. We had size at 705 that absolutely got eaten up. NVIDIA is on a rocket ship to the north side and it's helping propel the futures up as well because here we go again on the futures heading towards that high of day 17896 is the high we're at 17885 so we're awfully close to that high of day but i'm not really seeing too much market participation by the mag 7 to help propel this market i really see nvidia moving and i don't see much else softies bouncing a bit but it's still negative on the day meta we just talked about that double bottom and it's still negative half a percent down on the day. And Apple, well, Apple's been the dead one the entire morning. And Tesla's doing nothing. 
So I don't even know what's really pr pushing this market up, but it definitely is not the Mag 7, maybe Nvidia and some other chip names that are having uh, a good go at it at the moment. But I'm not sure what to make of this move, to be quite honest with you here, because there's just very little participation by the big names. So we'll keep an eye out on the 705 level here on NVDA RamRam as we come right back down to hold 705. Do we hold it though? We're only up uh, you know, a little over half a percent right now, maybe almost two, uh, two thirds of a percent, keeping an eye on these levels and uh, we'll figure it out, I guess. Small caps, Andy, JJ, no, nope. small caps are definitely not moving the market. Uh, small caps run independently of the market. They're probably not even in, uh, in the waiting. Well, definitely they're not in the waiting. It's a NASDAQ 100 and the S&P 500. They're, these guys are not even involved at all. Maybe the S&P 600. That's the small cap. The S&P 600 is a small caps, right? Yeah, yeah, the 400 is mid caps or something like that. Yes, the 600, yeah, yeah it is a small caps. Yeah, so maybe the S&P 600. Is it Katina Man? Small caps, yes, I was right on that. Thank you. Uh, um, 900 to 900 million to 6 billion is the market cap requirement for the S&P 600 small cap. So, yeah, that's uh, it's interesting there. I don't actually know that. What's your uh, what's your look there, dear? Yeah, my look is I'm trying to run out of this cyber truck uh, with my dignity intact. Oh no, I <laughs> might have accidentally added to the short. Oh thank gosh, you canceled funny. that. Uh, thank you. Uh, dignity yeah. intact. Like, uh, why would your dignity no, be I'm intact? Joking. I'm, I'm very much joking. Trade. Yeah, we got above that VWAP, um, so I got out. Meta, though. I like this meta short uh, for the time being. Well, I watched what we did at 467. We ran up about 15 cents, and then we ran away like a scared dog. Um, that was a weird analogy, but that's okay. Like, you know when the, you ring the doorbell and the dog, like, yips? That's what happened when Meta got above that 467. So I got involved in this short here. Um, I'm really going to try to take this. To, uh, I want to I want to see what we do at 466.50, but my main profit taking areas are going to be 465.80 ish, where we had that previous bounce, and that 465.30 ish. So we're really going to watch to see here. It needs to kind of go down first for me to get no. interested, but I like the look of this. Also, Nvidia going down from that 705 area. I was going to be really watching Nvidia at 706 because that was the area we had some rejection earlier. But Nvidia, like, eh, I don't know how I'm feeling. We're down about 50 cents now. That's at 704.50 for Nvidia. I also want to look at PayPal. Quite a few people, including Music Vid in the chat, mentioning PayPal. I don't have much to say on PayPal intraday, except for this 56 hold is kind of interesting. Um, what do you look for? Held here, bounced up a little bit, come back to 56. So I want to look here. I know, I believe this was a level I was mentioning earlier on PayPal. I want to say this 56. No, I was, I was talking about 58. Okay, so we're way below the 58. We're, yeah, 56 is... 56 is actually kind of an interesting level. We had a little bit of chop return at 5570, I guess, earlier. This is going to be October 2023. Then we come back and we bounce. Um, part of this, this trend line, we bounce a little bit off that 56 area on this upper trend line. This is November 2023. This is around, um, what day is that? It was around um, where we had that Black Friday. So I think this is, yeah, a nice look here for PayPal. Oh, my gosh, Palantir. I just talked to the Katina man. At 25. Thanks, Ram Ram. Um, I just talked to the Katina man, and he's like, I'm looking at Palantir, and here we go, $25 coming in on Palantir. And just look at the gargantuan size that's sitting on the book right now, on the ask at 25. I really want to see how we jive with this uh, size over here. Do we eat it up like it's nothing, or do we actually uh, encounter resistance at this level? We're going to watch. We're awfully close. We're dancing 97, 98. Uh, the high a day right now on PLTR, let me just look real quick here, is, um, bro, what is this? Why does it do that? All right, hold on. PLTR. It drives me crazy. PLTR. For some reason, it doesn't show me the percentage up unless I have the ticker loaded. Okay. So $24.99. We haven't even come into $25 yet um, on Palantir. I'm completely, like, you're not going to catch me shorting at $25. That's just not my style. I get that, you know, some people like to do that. They like to mean reversion. It's a key level of resistance. But, you know, I'm a momentum trader. I'm a trend following trader. And I want to take this in the direction it's going. Um, so the trade for me uh, is done, if, especially if $25 uh, does act as a resistance. I still won't short off these levels. Here we go. 
Uh, I, I'm bringing it to you though, because a lot of people out there in the chat are mean reversion traders, uh, and this is where they thrive, and I couldn't be happier for them, so I'll, I'll continue to point out this kind of stuff. So 25 coming in here, 24.99, here we go. We're getting 99s on the tape. So the tape is printing 99s. I still haven't seen any come in at the $25 level. The 99 level though, uh, the size on 99 is getting eaten. Here we go, here comes 25. No new size coming in at 99 at the moment. And the size at 25 just actually grew exponentially. So a lot of volatility now happening at 25 on PLTR. Looking to go 6% to the good. We're gonna have to see how this one resolves, but finally getting a little bit of uh, nice momentum midday as things have really slowed down. Uh, today, for whatever reason, we'll, we'll have to wait and see if this breaks or not. Right, we're still getting resistance. A lot of tug and war, tug of war right now between buyers and sellers at this level. How we resolve, I don't know, but good look right now on PLTR for um, for the longs. I mean, like this thing was where was where the hell was this thing yesterday? This thing closed out at twenty three sixty. So good move up, good move up. Here we go. We're still dancing with twenty five. Uh, this hasn't resolved either way, so you're gonna have to pack your patience figure out where this one goes and then decide how to trade this. Yeah, that's basically it. Uh, what else we got there in the chat? Today is one of, uh, Damien Oliveira is saying, today is one, maybe two uptrend days for IWM in the last two weeks. Yeah, Adara was trading IWM earlier. Russ doing well today, up one and a third, looking to go one and a half. Still below that 2,000 point level though on the Russ for the March 15th contract. You know, it's definitely been underperforming the NQ and the ES uh, on the year. Even the Dow, I think it's underperforming the Dow. So we'll have to uh, see this. Chat GPT is yelling about Mara. And my, bat my man, Patty Ice, is probably pleased as punch about Mara. Let's have a look at Mara over here. We'll switch from Palantir into Mara, which trades on the NASDAQ. What is Mara doing? Up five some odd percent. Here we go through that 2060 level. Here we go up into 69s. No, excuse me. Mara's up 17 and three quarters percent. Patty, Patty, have you seen Mara? You seen Mara? 17 and two thirds percent. Pa Patty bought it at 17, 17. And I'm not going to tell you how many shares he got, but he got quite a few. And so it's an absolute print factory right now on, on Patty, in Patty's um, personal account. Shout out to Mara. Uh, good look on crypto today as we took 45,000 up 2.43% on BTC. You got micro strategies up 13 and a half. You got Coinbase up eight and a, eight and a third. Mara, we already talked about riots up 12 and a third. Uh, CLSK. Clean Spark, that's up eight point eight and three quarters. CLSK reports after the bell today. So keep your eye on this name here, Ram Ram, as uh, CLSK is above 10 bucks. And this, again, is reporting after the bell. So make sure to check th the show with Katina Man, the market recap show, as this will be likely reporting during that time of day. Yeah, I mean, I think, yeah, go check out the show, check out the podcast. They talk about earnings coming up this week. Also, I want to point out, NVIDIA, bull flagging, just to skosh here. Uh, this is the three minute. We have that move up, uh, that big move up, and then we chop and shirt around the 705. Now, my thing is, my hesitation with getting involved in this in either direction would be this 705, 50, 706 area was quite the top earlier. So this could be rejecting. I am not gonna get involved in this either way, but I thought I would point it out. I wasn't a meta short. I exited said meta short because look at that move up. I was watching um, that seven, because that 760, that 467 area, uh, 467.60, uh, we broke above it, so I exited the short. But my initial reason for entering is we held that 467 area like a glove. We initially did dip below. Then we fell back down. That's okay. Um, I am in another Meg 7 short right now, though, that's just kind of chopping around, not doing too much. And it is Google. And my reason, my logic for the Google is, I mean, five minute, three minute, almost the same, but I like trading off the five. Um, we have this... We had a flat top earlier, right? This has been super rangy in the bottom of about this, what, this 145.73 area. But now what we're seeing, starting around um, 1230, is we have a high, then we have a lower high. Now we're kind of uh, languishing a little bit, another lower high. This is not going to be a super long trade. This is going to be super, super scalpy, taking out part of this around that 145.60 area. I already have the rest in profit taker ready to go. 
And then um, that 145.65 area, uh, just because we had that, that previous low and then also a little bit of high earlier resistance, support, I think that could be a good area to take some profit. Then I'm also going to be interested in that consolidated bottom at 145.40. This is going to definitely be more of a piece for the dream. But if that dream comes true, I will have a piece ready for it. And if we break above this, this higher high of 146, I'm going to have to get out. If we hold 146, then I might add to the position here because I don't have too much. Like I said, I've really just been trying to practice like adding into positions, piecing into positions in ways that make sense when it makes sense to do so. So that's really the look here for Google. But we're starting to break down a skosh. So... I am pleased to sponge. Let's look at the SPY here, because I've been trying to, I SPY the SPY. I've been trying to trade these ETFs a little bit more just to diversify a little bit. Um, slightly higher lows, higher highs here. So if we do, uh, if we do get a nice little bounce here at that one, that 498 area, especially given, look at where we had that higher high. Uh, so that previous high, that 498, if we bounce off this 498 and it looks like we might want to, I might take this to 498.30, about a 30 cent winner, uh, but I want to make sure we hold here just because I do like that idea of just, again, playing ranges, scalping ranges. That is my happy place. That is my sweet spot. And if I can, if I can, you know, find a way to do that and really, you know, hone that in some way, I would be, of course, pleased as punch. Are you open to... Um, employing and adopting new trading styles? I think you are, no? I am, but I find mm -hmm. I do not do my best at those. I think that's when I get a little bit... Like, so for a while, I was trying the whole, like, hodl, like the hold on for dear life thing, and then just getting out when you have... Um, when you break below your, your risk reward right. area, but that was just really not working for me. I find um, I, I find like I am the most calm in a trade too when I'm scalping. Okay. Because I know too, like what you were saying is like, you know, you have to be kind of true to whatever your personality is. Fair. And I yeah. think that's kind of where I've been happy. But yeah, I'm open to trying new strategies. And I think there are like, like there are certain stocks that I think I remember DocuSign earnings. I think I just held, I got into a good level and I just held it. And then it ended up working out okay. But I think like with, with certain exceptions, I think the scalping has made me a skosh more comfortable. Fair. But no, I totally, I am open to um, expanding my horizons. Especially and because you you're like that. a little newer too. You don't really know like where you're going to excel in the future. That's but true like, too. Yeah, I, I don't mean to tell you what to do, obviously. I just, you know, asking, see where, where your head's at there. Yeah, thank uh, you. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll have to wait and see. We'll probably become like the best momentum trader. You never know. Thank you. I appreciate that. I mean, we'll, we'll see. But All right, guys. You. Uh, NVIDIA just popped up again after basing out here at around 704 and change. Kind of bull flag ish, possibly here on NVIDIA. And we weren't really sure why this started moving midday, but it started moving with SMCI. Look, there was some obvious connection between these two, as there has been in the past SMCI and NVDA. Now NVIDIA is up 0.6%. It had gone negative briefly on the day, breaking below 700. I'm talking about this area right here, but like we reclaimed that level awfully quickly. And there we go again above 705. I'm hesitant to punch in here though. Okay, and the, let me tell you why. Number one, I don't kind of understand what this whole move is with NVIDIA. And we are also at this top. We're awfully close to this top on NVIDIA, 706. This was clearly a level earlier, right? Where we couldn't get anything printed above that 706 level, except for obviously that IB high, which absolutely retraced in like a second. So here we go. We're making our way into 706 again, 70, 705 and three quarters coming in. Let's see if we get that decided break above 706. And if we get a break, is it, you know, just perfunctory, a quick, quick above and then a retracement down? Or do we have a closing print on the five minute chart at 706? Did we just break above it? Uh, 705.95 now. So we're awfully close to that level. I want to see what we do here because this one is really the only Meg 7 name that's really moving with any vigor at this point. I mean, you have Amazon coming down into 170, which is a key level to keep your eye out. You had Meta retrace popping up off that 465 and just touch 468 at VWAP. That was a hell of a trade for whoever took that. I know Neil wet his beak on that trade as well. Um, and then Softy just came in to break even here at 414, but unable to stay above that level. There goes NVIDIA above 706. Uh, I missed out on the trade. Okay, well, that's on my fault. That's my fault. But there it goes, 706 and a half. It's pumping up here. We have a 707.94 HOD. So if we continue to go here, guys, keep your eye on that 708 level as a possible level of resistance. But you know how NVIDIA has been trading in the past, these resistance levels may mean nothing. So we'll have to wait and see. 
good move on NVIDIA. It's really moving here while the rest of the seven names are kind of stagnant, to be, to be fair. Um, people yelling about Mara. Let's have a look at MARA. I just had that on a side chart over here. I flipped to CLSK. Let's go back to Mara. There goes Mara. Wow. Okay. Here comes 21 bucks on Mara. 18 and a half Ooh. percent today. Adara on Mara. What a look it has been, baby. And that 20 dip was just awfully nice. Look at this 20 dip, Ram Ram. Uh, would you, Ram Ram, would you have taken this uh, trade over here? <laughs> Katina's wondering why I'm asking Ramer. We're, 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 we're including her. We're including her. Uh, what do you think about this trade over here, Ram Ram? She's like, I don't know, bro. Leave me alone. <laughs> she's conflicted. She's alone right now. The Chilean nightmare is oh. in a meeting. So she's having to do everything on the ones and twos on her own. Yeah, that's $20 hold, though, uh, especially on that big pop up into 20 and a half. Comes back in, holds 20 to the T. Maybe gave up like two pennies. I think it went to 1998. Great look on Mar. It continues to head higher. New high day as we speak, 2085 right now. Wow, NVIDIA just retraced aggressively off that 706 pop. And down we go again into 705. Do we hold 705 this time? This is, wow, a lot of bamboozle. Topping tail candle right now on NVIDIA. Looks awfully ugly. I'll show you on the five-minute chart. Much better represented. This is an ugly candle if you are in a long. You don't want to see these type of candles. Yeah, so we'll have to wait and see. Do we get momentum to the high side, or are we going to retrace here on NVIDIA? We'll have to wait. Yeah, I was trying to scalp that NVIDIA bull flag breakout, and I got about, they got about 10 pennies away from my point of entry, and then it flew up, and I was like, you know what? I don't want to, I have to take that order out before we fly back down and I get involved in something I don't know mm. what I get involved in. Um, but I do get involved in this meta short, which I'm happy to be involved in. And I want to, I want to explain this. Go. Uh, this is a huge candle thing. Look at this candle. We had this pop up and then uh, about 40 cents and then the, the sellers overwhelming the buyers with the viciousness here. Uh, we have not decisively broken above that 468. Of course, as I say, we broke above 468. But I'm going to be cognizant of this. I'm getting out of this if we break above that 468.40 uh, area, which would be that kind of consolidation area from earlier. But my point of entry here, beyond that candle, was look at where we had that consolidation earlier. Look at where we failed to break out of earlier. Look where we had a little bit of the earlier pop around that same area. And the fact that we have a hard time overtaking that 468 um, area slash VWAP with the viciousness. We can't do it. Um, as I say, it looks like Meta's trying to Make me out to be a liar. No, I'm joking. It's fine. But yeah, so I, I'm interested in this short until it tells me it's a no-go. The Google short, though, was a little bit fruitful, so I'm pretty happy. Um, took out some of it here at this 468.66 level of 145. We can tell. I was just looking at Meta. Whew. Um, that 145 area, 145.68, took out some of that because that was that previous low. Like I said, saving a piece for the dream. Shout out to uh, Sharif. For that 145.40, 145.35-ish area, because that was where we had some consolidation earlier. So really just trying to look at levels. Also, this comment came in earlier, but shout out to uh, Clutch in the chat saying, uh, that's why trading is this odd, elusive thing. You've got to find your trading style. Most quit due to losses before finding it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree, and I really appreciate what you're saying uh, there. And I think that. that's something really good for me to hold on to. And I have to say, I do appreciate being on a trading floor, being on a prop floor, being able to learn in the sim, because trading is really hard. It can be very stressful. And as Sharif often says, as a trader, you are always mad. <laughs> and I've really learned that. But the, I think the biggest thing is not being mad at yourself and you know, you, learning, like, why, why are you upset? Why did this trade not work out for whatever reason, right? I think that's really key. Okay. Is there a Sean trade update? Uh, the, the NVIDIA's uh, tanking into 704. Uh, he short what? Say it again. 119 short on? Arm. Arm. Sorry, I was like, I thought you were talking about NVIDIA. The Katina man is short 119 on arm, baby. Uh, that's already almost two bucks in the money there. As uh, this, Say it again. He's sitting on the bid as we speak. So... He's out of half right now, so 117 hit it, Katina, man. Uh, arm is arm is a cheese, man. That is volatile. Uh, big dip down. Shout out to the Katina, man, for that arm trade there, uh, taking that bad boy short. I'm looking at Palantir. Apparently, we got a break here on 25 on Palantir, but it was very short-lived. We popped into 06s, and then right back down we went. Um, so I'm keeping an eye here to see if we can take $25 on a closing basis. This has been pumped into the high side again, 5.5% higher at its highs. We were talking about that size 
at $25, not being able to get run through. It does get run through, but the shorts were waiting on the other side at 25 to push that bad boy back down. So we're getting a bit of a, a topping, uh, you know, a, a bit of a rounded top right now on Palantir, maybe signaling that we are headed to the downside. If we do head down, keep your eye out on this 24 and two thirds. That is a bit of a top there that we had earlier before we ascended right back up. So this could be an interesting support level. Scott H, I want to see. I want to see Palantir at 30. Wake me up when it hits. All right, man. Uh, you just uh, you just put your phone number there in the chat for everybody to see, and uh, I'll give you a call real quick. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Shout out to Scott H, one of the uh, one of the OGs in the chat, and always always pointing out great trades. Uh, Mark Susi, Google Tank. Someone's printing over there. Money, money, money. Thank you. Money. Great short on Thank Google. You. There Thank you, you go. Thank you so much. I'm pretty happy with this. Yeah, we, we were a couple cents away from my last profit taker. I ended up putting it at 145.45. Could we get there? I feel like Sharif and Sean, when they get into auctioneer mode, are we going to get it? Are we going to get it? Oh, we're getting there. We're getting closer. I'm moving the arms Down. a lot today. We're, we got it. Whew. Uh, thank you for the down. I feel like that Google needed that because you that said that down trade. and Google fell. Thank you Look so much. Look at the beak wetters. That must make you feel thank pretty good. Thank you. I feel really happy. And it's just using previous levels, right? Hey. We had the early level of support. Then we get into that range earlier from free market. We have the second beak wetter ready to go. Thank you so much. I also want to talk about this meta short, if I may, because this is another one I'm really happy with where the beak wetters went. We tried it earlier, a little bit too early. So I, you know, I just said we broke above that area. We had to get out. That's okay. Thank you for the bang button. Then I see this big candle and this failure to overtake VWAP and I say, hmm, short season again, question mark? And uh, Meta said, yes, Adara, it is. Uh, you just had to be a little bit patient there. Uh, but basically, yeah, like I, you know, I'm not going to complain about getting out where I did in the first one because the short, the timing was just not right for this first short. That's fine. But I look at this earlier pre market consolidation, this earlier area of resistance being here, and the fact that we resisted VWAP and I said, as long as we don't break up decisively above VWAP into that 468, 40 area, this is a short. Really happy it worked out. I will say too, you know, for the sake of honesty, this second one was actually, this was a typo. I was trying to get out the rest of it around that 460, but we did bounce right back up. So, you know, sometimes typo trades, sometimes fat fingers can save lives. I am joking and exaggerating, of course, but I have to say I'm not too upset about how that ended up working out. Um, thank you so much to Vin. Thank you so much, everybody, for the um, support in the chat. Uh, much appreciated. And I'm just really happy to be here and learning every day. Um, and yeah, I think Nimit saying thank you. Also, I had to shout out um, Synth Pop Boy for putting home, home on the range in the chat because that is certainly the song the market has been singing <laughs> over here. So I shouted him out in the chat. I'll shout him out in the show as well. Uh, the, the Stitch Lady also putting out some great um, comments here in the chat as well. The biggest thing to remember is don't go all in as a new trader and don't get greedy. Dang. Uh, lastly, remove all emotion. You will do just fine. Thank you so much for your advice there. I'm sure that, you're happy with That last with part Disney. is hard. Yeah. As you said, you know, uh, to shout out the advice from Alfred on the bat phone, you have to um, be dead inside. You gotta be dead inside. I mean, there, there, was a, there was a day in October, and I've mentioned this on the show, I was down over five figures in my personal account, and it was not a good feeling, obviously, because we, we know what the flush in October was like. But, you know, <laughs> did I feel emotions during that time? Absolutely. But, you know, just kind of not, not as bad as it used to be. Man, when I first started trading, slippers would get thrown around the room, you know, things would be like the walls were damaged and that was like just, you know, my hot-headed nature. And then as, you know, more repetitions comes in, you just, you know, becomes less and less uh, a thing that sets you off. Uh, uh, let me talk about uh, CRSP, because Tam Panda, Tam Panda, CRSP on four hour or daily. This is a good look. I don't know what the stock is. CRISPR there, oh. This is the gene editing company. This is uh, Kathy Woods was talking about this yesterday on uh, last call with Brian Selter, and she was talking about this, and she was, you know, talking up a storm about it, about how it's going to cure this, that, and the other thing. But anyway, this is the four-hour look that he wanted me to have a look at. Look at these sequentially higher lows here on the four-hour, dipping into the 200, moving at EMA, and every single dip into the 200 EMA has been bought up with higher lows. However, we haven't necessarily got those higher highs. In fact, we've been kind of flat topping here at 68 bucks, give or take, right? Um, obviously, we have more upside here. The double top that we had between November and December absolutely sent this one tanking, probably an earnings play because that looks like an earnings candle with 10 million shares there. 
But yeah, good look for CRSP and it's breaking out through these local highs. I think it will have to break through 69 for people who get really interested here. But shout out to Tampanda for uh, pointing that out to me. Um, it's just apropos because I, I, I heard Kathy talk about it yesterday. So it's nice that you put that on my radar. I probably need to have a gene editing or some sort of you know watch list that puts the, some of these uh, companies together because they're going to be the real deal. Like we're not talking about uh, suppressing ailments, we're talking about curing ailments by changing your genes. Now, however you feel about that, you know we're not going to get into the politics of it. Uh, the point is, you know, if this gets uh, approved by the FDA, there's going to be all sorts of money flowing into this. Uh, so we'll have to wait and see. But yeah, 68 bucks uh, right now, this CRSP 67.96 but I want to see what that 69 does if and when it comes in. In fact, I like it so much, I'm putting um, an alert at that and I'm going to leave it to trigger at any time, including regular mar outside of regular market hours. So uh, shout out to you for pointing that out. Yeah, it's a really fabulous look there. And I think, you know, I love, you know, we had a look at Sharif's watch list a couple weeks ago. And I think what I loved and what I said there is it's so detailed. There's so many different little categories. And I yeah. think absolutely gene editing could be a new category. Also, want to thank you so much to Bears versus Bulls here. Uh, thank you, Sharif and Adair, for the great edutainment and great job in the trades today. Best of luck to both of you for the rest of the day. For all you do, really inspiring. Thank you so much to you. That's as very we say, nice to say. Yeah, it was very sweet. And you, you're killing it um, every single day. Thank you so much. Much. We we love the support. We hope everybody in the chat Thank has a so good much. time because um, whether or not the trades are are fire or make you want to retire, I think hopefully we're bringing a little bit of edutainment. We're teaching you. <laughs> we're laughing together. We're making puns together. We're saying pump it together. Pump it. Or duck. <laughs> I like that. Sharif the Aflac duck <laughs> of Trader TV apparently. But no, in all seriousness, um, thank you so much everyone for tuning in and um, really much appreciated here. Um, yeah, I'm just looking here at the, the, what, what a good, yeah, what a good time. What a good community. I feel very blessed here. We have about 45 seconds. So I'm good. I like this question from SNS crew. It sounds like a band from the nineties. Oh, what? Had you entered KSS? At what point would you have exited or would you still be holding? Coles, what a rocket Coles oh. has been today. You're going to see this right yeah, now I'm on excited. the NY Adara, but yeah. it is an absolute rocket to the high side. If we could show her chart Ram Ram for a second. Wow. Yeah. That's a beautiful. I, mean, look I have to be really right honest now. with you. Um, SNS crew. I, I would be really scared to enter this one because I was getting nervous at entering things at highs. I would have, if I was looking at this one, which I have to admit I wasn't, I would have been looking for this dip here. Um, any of these dips, we haven't had that many dips, so I really would have been looking. Um, 11.05, 12.25, and 12.45. Um, and then I would have probably, you know what I'm like, I would have pieced out at areas of previous resistance. But honestly, this would not be my type of trade. This is much more momentum -y than me. I have to be really honest with you as an S crew, but thank you for giving me the opportunity to analyze that and also taking us right into two o'clock we will be seeing you tomorrow with the drags of our earnings discussion same bad time same bad channel for now brendo is going to be at that big desk on a busy afternoon here as we head towards the close in what's turning out to be